Let me check and see. I'm just trying to find us here real quick. All right. And as soon as I can find us and check our sound. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see us there. Good. Do we have audio? We do. Mr. Music, please. <laughs> Hey everyone, thanks for being here. Thanks for sharing our show with your friends and letting everyone know that a Mexican Crossing Lines is on right now. Oh yeah. I hope everybody's listening. Um, we are both in studio today, Duke and I, mm. to share a show uh, that I think is really important that we talk about, I guess, again. And maybe we'll have to do it again and again and again and again because yeah. um, maybe the message isn't being received for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, tonight's show is called The Father of Lies. And uh, 
this can refer to Trump. Um, people that lie in general. We'll be talking about some of those people that we've talked about recently that have been lying. And we'll also talk about the nature of the truth, the nature of lies. Mm -hmm. I mean, that phrase, the father of lies, refers to Satan. You know, that's yeah. what uh, the Bible calls Satan, the father of lies. So we're going to talk about lies and liars and uh, why it is important to be able to recognize the truth from a lie and what happens if you can't anymore. Um, it's a very important topic to discuss as we're going into the midterm elections tomorrow, November 6th. Mm, definitely. If definitely. you are not registered to vote, get your vote on tomorrow. Make sure that you go to your polling place. Make sure you get a voter registration card mm -hmm. for places where you can uh, register the same day. Yep. You can do that here in Minnesota and yep. in North Dakota. Exactly. In North Dakota, there's a affidavit you can fill out. Uh, in Minnesota, you can register same day of election. Mm -hmm. And other states, I don't know a lot of the other states. You'll just have to check. You know, hopefully that they have same day where you, if you're not registered, you can actually cast your vote. Some don't, but some do. And just call people and be like, hey, are you going to go vote tomorrow? Buddy vote with someone. Take a friend. Call a person that you in your family and say, let's go vote together just to make sure that you get everybody out there. Um, so we're going to be talking about all of that on today's Mexican Crossing Lines with your host, Cindy gomez Shemp And Duke gomez Shemp Here on 88.1 FM, KPPP, LP, Fargo, Moorhead, where we are adding local color to your airwaves. Uh, you can also catch our shows online at kpppfm.com. And uh, I do want to share that the last show we talked about was called Scapegoating with Terrorism. Oh, yeah. We talked about uh, the way that Trump is using the migrants that are nowhere near the U.S.-Mexico border uh, to mm -hmm. dog whistle hatred and what that has caused the terrorist attacks that we experienced in the last two weeks and how they were incited by the lies, by the hatred, by the scapegoating of people in Trump's administration, Trump himself and others that are echoing those sentiments. So today I'm going to get a little bit deeper into that discussion. I think it merits uh, maybe several discussions on the topic until we can begin to understand what our path to healing is, what our path to enlightenment and truth are. Mm, mm. Yes. yes. Um, <clears throat> because there's a reason why we are in the fix that we're in with a president like Trump and with people that honestly did not have the ability to discern that this was a bad choice for everyone including themselves and now many of those trump supporters are lamenting their choice because it was so horrible could this have been predicted yes how were those people so blind naive gullible stupid you ask yourself yeah i'm going to talk about that and the nature of truth tonight because it's important that you understand it's not enough of to vote Anybody can go and just vote, but what about all those people that make the wrong choice in spite of themselves that do things like all of these Trump supporters that are now begging for forgiveness? I mean, I've seen videos of this. They're sitting down and hmm. saying, I'm sorry that, that, that I voted this way. Um, and then they're telling people, they're coming out in droves doing videos saying, I am a lifelong Republican and I am voting Democrat this year because I am uh, afraid of losing my health care because I have a pre-existing condition mm. and I'm really sick. And there's a millions and millions of people that are just mortified at the behavior of our president. He is a huge embarrassment. Even the GOP will not go near him anymore. People <laughs> are abandoning ship. The question is, how did they get on the boat in the first place? That's right. Why didn't they rock the boat sooner? And that's what, what we're going to be talking about on today's shows. Uh, I was motivated to do this show, by the way, Duke, mm -hmm. because I had so many people sending me information after our last show in which we featured a liar that made a huge, huge lie about being shot, Marcus Mitchell, oh, yeah. a guy that was a, a water protector at Standing Rock, yeah. a protester at Standing Rock. 
And um, I told you all about his story in the past and on my last show, Scapegoating uh, with Terrorism. And um, I got a bunch of people sending me updated information on that situation. So our show shook something loose because right after our show, there was a post by Mitchell saying he lied. Yeah. There was all of these other videos that surfaced of the people that shared his lie. Mm -hmm. explaining why they shared his lie videos that were up about uh, his being shot got deleted and all sorts of craziness happened. Um, and I did want to respond to that. And I think that uh, striking while the iron is hot is the best thing to do. Mm -hmm. Put the information out when the people need it most as soon as possible. And that's what we did in the Kathleen Bennett case. That's how we were able to exonerate her. And so I wanted you to know as soon as possible about what I've learned in this Marcus Mitchell case. Oh, yeah. And also thank everyone who sent us information about that. How can folks send us more information, Duke, and reach well, out to us and donate? How can they oh, do yes, all of those yes. things? I'll, I'll tell you all about those things. You know, what, one way that people have been sending us a lot of information has been through our Facebook page because it's publicly open. And so, and you can send attachments and you can uh, communicate us through that way. Uh, you just go to 88.1 FM Fargo Moorhead, and you'll, you'll find our, our main Facebook page there. We also have a couple other Facebook pages, the People's Press Project and Mexi Dash Can. And uh, Cindy has a public page at Cindy Go Shemp. Uh, you can also give us a call. I mean, if you want to leave us a voicemail, voice message, <clears throat> you can call 701 566 0917. The number is 701 566 0917. And also, you can go to uh, our website, our kppfm.com. And we put all of our podcasts there, and we, we upload of our um, our videos to YouTube now. We leave them on Facebook, but Facebook has taken some of our videos down over time. So we upload them on, on uh, YouTube, and you can you can subscribe to our YouTube YouTube channel. And I should put a link in, in, our, in our website that you can do that easier, but I have put it on the, uh, the Facebook site. Mm -hmm. But you can go to those podcasts, and you can comment on each one. Plus, we have a web form where you can actually fill out a web form and send us a message that way. You can do regular email, cindy at kppfm.com. Or me, Duke at kppfm.com. And also on that kppfm.com website, we have a donation tab because we are a nonprofit, non commercial uh, radio station that uh, we rely on support from the community to exist. We're not commercial. We don't, we don't get paid dollars for advertising. We do underwriting, however. And you can go to kppfm.com. And click the donate button, and any donation you make is tax deductible because we're an, a real authentic 501c3 tax exempt organization. Uh, we started this radio station, uh, straight, it was a, like a three or four year process to get it going. We've been on the air for two years, and we've been able to raise enough money to, to pay for the equipment and to pay for the, the rent on the tower and all those sorts of things we need to broadcast daily. And we broadcast in the Fargo Moorhead community which uh, we have a reach of uh, about 170,000 people that we can reach with our actual terrestrial antenna to the radios on 88.1. But we've been doing the Facebook uh, uh, live streams, and we, we take a lot of those live streams and we make them into radio programs so the listening audience in our community can hear it on the radio. So um, you'll find all those things at kppfm.com slash donate and make a donation so we can continue our work. Plus, we can, we can put your business organization on the air and basically do an underwriting advertisement so you'll get more support for what you're doing and recognize for your philanthropy and your support of us at a nonprofit. So check it out at kppfm.com. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the reasons I've been bringing you this information is because I shared in my show Disaster Vultures, Disaster Vultures in Puerto Rico, part one and part two all three of those shows, which I did recently, that some of these people from Standing Rock have been um, traveling around doing disaster relief with organizations that are defunct, mm -hmm. that um, caused harm in the Kathleen Bennett case, put out misinformation or lies, uh, tried to um, commit, well, committed crimes, assaults, uh, and con people out of money. Um caused property damage, uh, assaulted women, mm. uh, all of the committed rapes. I mean, yeah. uh, Activate Now and the people that uh, populated that organization um, have a lot to answer for. And there are um, now a whole new group of these disaster vulture organizations 
Boondocks uh, Canine, mm-hmm. which we showed you is not a nonprofit, or they're uh, also a defunct pro- nonprofit. Yeah. That you've got um, all of these uh, people that are impact investors. It seems like they're t- opportunists taking yeah. taking uh, advantage of people that are in disaster zones and they're not being uh, honest about who they're affiliated with they're not answering the questions that need to be answered about what their um, cohorts have been accused of and are responsible for and that has real day-to-day consequences because uh, you can't um, expect people to trust you first of all and uh, to believe that you're a good person that has good intent uh, and be affiliated with and not answer for, not explain, ever tell the full truth about the people that you have been associated with, like Activate Now's at Higgins. So uh, for all of those people that um, I've called out in those organizations, answer me that, riddle me this. Yeah. How in the F did you get hung up with all of these people that are criminals that are part of these defunct organizations um, and why are you not responding to um, or denouncing those folks if you really don't have anything to do with them anymore and are not one of them? If you're not like them, if you're not a person that is a con man and untrustworthy, why don't you denounce those folks and explain your association with them originally? Because if you don't, then I am hard pressed to believe you. Mm-hmm. You have to answer fully and tell the truth fully. Okay. So today we're going to talk about the nature of truth. And I originally intended to call this show The Road to Hell is Paved with Good Intentions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Remember? Oh, yeah. Uh, and the idea behind that is, you know, intentions um, are not measurable. Yeah. Okay. I cannot see into anybody's heart Mm -hmm. and see if their heart is in the right place. You know how people say that? Well, their heart was in the right place. So. But they messed it up terribly. But if the outcome of what you did is horrible, your heart being in the right place or your intentions being good from the get go doesn't change the fact that what you did, the actions that you took had horrible consequences. And if you are either too naive, too gullible, or too stupid to know why that is a danger to people, then you are not trustworthy. You are not somebody who should have uh, lives put in their hands. You should not be in a place uh, of of authority or um, of importance in taking care of anybody because... The fact of the matter is you are not capable of discerning what is and what isn't fraud, what is Mm -hmm. and what isn't true, what is and what isn't a lie. Either you're complicit or you're too dumb for us to be able to entrust you with important things, including people's lives and or finances. You get me? You feel me? Oh, yeah. I'm not saying because people are like, but this is a good person. Yeah. I mean, their intentions were good. Their heart was in the right place. So Cindy, please, please, please don't throw this person under the bus. Don't go after this person. Don't be mean to mm-hmm. that person. Is being uh, honest, is being truthful, is exposing the truth mean? Is that where we are right now? Because it feels like that. And I'm going to show you examples tonight of that, of how people who get caught red handed, who are hand in cookie char caught oh, yeah. in trouble yeah. for lying, how their reactions are not truly heartfelt apologies, not truly remorse, not truly change, not truly worthy of you being inspired by that or saying that they've done the right thing. And if you are giving people a pass, you are, are an enabler you are allowing people to have a false sense of uh contrition of forgiveness of um being held accountable and being punished in some way because you know what 
I'll tell you something and you can look this up for yourselves. But studies have shown that the way that we learn something, it sticks in here in our brain. The way that we learn things is through pain, through pain. Something that traumatizes you, something that hurts, something that really causes you suffering, whether it's mental or physical anguish, that will remind you forever of what you need to avoid. And so when somebody does something horrible, like say, for example, pretend that they were involved in a murder and got shot in the chest twice and then try to get money out of people to help them because they were almost killed by a gun, a couple of gunshots. And that having being, uh, that being a lie, that kind of horrible. Oh yeah. When somebody does something like that, um, if you give them a pass, they will go on to commit more and more heinous crimes. And um, I'm going to talk about how we uh, need to not only hold the person that lied, that made the lie accountable, but all of the enablers too. Oh, yeah. And yeah. we are all guilty of being, a, you know, on that slippery slope of being enablers because society teaches us to coddle liars. Look at what we did to one of the, the father of lies, the greatest liars of them all, Donald Trump. People like that fail upwards and they continue to get more power and more money and more control over people, even as they lie to you, even as they lie to all of us. If that's what you want for your leaders and your rulers, if this is what you're enabling, then that's the leadership you deserve. And so we're going to be going out tomorrow to vote. We're going to go out and vote for our leadership. But do the people that make these decisions, are they really living in truth? Are they able to make good decisions? If they have uh, coddled and, and enabled liars, if they lie to themselves, if they delude themselves, probably not. So what does it matter if we massively mobilize everyone to vote if they don't have the proper uh, ability to discern right from wrong and make good choices? I mean, that should terrify you. I think that we need to get to the bottom of what it is that is true and what it is that is not true. We have uh, a, a, a press secretary. We have uh, spokespeople for Trump. Um like Kellyanne Con woman, oh, yeah. Conway, <laughs> that will tell you that the president's lies are called alternative facts. Yeah. That uh, a person's right to free speech means that their uh, baloney idea, ideas that are based on complete nonsense and fiction have the same weight and value as the truth, as facts, as evidence. That's the kind of horse poop society that we live in it's true it is definitely it's true and we got to get to the bottom mm -hmm, of it mm -hmm. so let me start with the example that we know of because you know we we, we can learn best from what we know the most oh, about yeah. uh, and definitely. we've been talking a lot about standing rock and the people that went there um so first of all let me start by telling you that uh Michael, Mark, Mike, there's Mark, so many, Marcus, Marcus Mitchell, Mitchell had a court date today. Yes. And the whole, uh, get Marcus money so he can come to his court date thing. We showed you he was, uh, trying to collect money for after he was shot, quote unquote shot, all of which turned out to be a hoax. I said to you. I showed you the court docket and I said to you, there's already been an agreement. He mm -hmm. lied about the judge. He lied about the, he lied about the judge illegally changing his court date. Uh, and, and I think that the fact that he lied about all of those things is because there's a plea agreement. He already knows that he made a plea agreement and he didn't probably even have to come here. My guess is that he didn't come here. Mm -hmm. And today at one thirty, <clears throat> he had his, uh, trial. Yep. Pre-trial uh, conference. And what does it say on the court docket happened? Well, let me uh, stretch this out and those for the listening audience. Uh, it's uh, You can find this information on the North Dakota website when you look up court cases. And uh, I'll make it a little bit bigger. 
basically today was a pre-trial conference because they had canceled the trial. And that's one reason that uh, Cindy said, hey, when they do that, they have an agreement. And, uh, and, they, did. <clears throat> and they did. It was uh, 11.05, 2018. It was a final disposition conference. It was 1.30. And this was posted, the hearing ended before 2 o'clock, and this was posted before 2 o'clock this afternoon. And what they did is that they had an order approving pre-trial diversion agreement. So they had a plea agreement, everybody, That's just right. like I told you. And then here it says the case <laughs> now has been settled because there's a because pre-trial an agreement. Uh, diversion agreement. What they've been doing in the past is that they you you know plead guilty to a lesser charge, and uh, you just... Uh, don't get in trouble for a year or a certain amount of months. It gets expunged from your record. Mm-hmm. So he already had a plea agreement. Uh, he knew about that. And he was trying to raise money so that he could get here for his court date because the judge wouldn't give him a continuance, even yeah. though he got shot in the chest twice and his, and his friend was murdered. By the way, that dead friend never came up again. Yeah. Like he didn't even ever it exist. Disappeared. You know why? Because it wasn't real. Mm-hmm. The whole thing was a lie. Marcus Mitchell, one of these Standing Rock protesters who have late, of late was featured in The Guardian. Oh, that's right. I read that. The Guardian, y'all. And do you know why? Because a lot of these Standing Rock leaders, a lot of the people out there continued to elevate liars like Marcus. I I told you that I uh, reached out to Marcus when people started circulating his video that said that he was severely injured at mm-hmm. Standing Rock, lost an eye, and uh, all of these things happened to him without him getting any support or help from the WPLC, the Water Protector Legal Collective, or anyone else. And I reached out to him, and he didn't want to talk to me. He didn't want to do an interview. And I also pointed out, without doing an interview with him, that I looked into what he had originally said back when Standing Rock Uh, when this injury supposedly happened in January of 2017, Mm -hmm. and that it differed greatly from what he was saying now. And then I said, you know, he's lying. I told you he's lying. What I can't do is tell you what what explanation he would have given you for the lie because he didn't want to talk to me when I exposed him as a liar. Despite all of that, People at Standing Rock vouched and continued to support this guy. And then he was prominently featured in The Guardian. In The Guardian. And then what happened from there? Well, more recently, John Gonzalez, uh, that has thousands and thousands of followers, who's very closely connected to LaDonna Mm -hmm. and Phyllis Young and Chase Iron Eyes and all of that leader, the Indigenous Environmental Network, and all of the leadership out at Standing Rock. He posted the video and told all of the people, uh, along with his book that he's trying to sell about Standing Rock with his fake Indian name, um, because he's a white dude pretending to be an Indian like so many of these white people, uh, transracial Indianing, that that Marcus needs your help. Marcus needs money. And I'm not going to play the whole thing for you, but I think it bears remembering, and especially before they, you know, get rid of all of these videos, it bears remembering what John Gonzalez did. He put out this video without checking a single detail, a single fact. He just put this information out there and um, he cried. You can't you can't see this video, those of you who are listening in the Fargo mm-hmm. Moorhead Metro area, but this man is sitting here he, his the way he was scrunching up his nose like oh, yeah. that. Mm-hmm. I think it's a method to to make you uh, tear up. It it is a way of like when you scrunch up your oh, nose yeah. like that. It's a way of making your you tear up artificially mm-hmm. if you're trying to fake cry. But I will say this: I don't know if John Gonzalez um, was fake crying or for real crying. I just know he hasn't denounced this horrible uh, criminal lie because what this guy did wasn't just defraud people for money to supposedly come to Standing Rock to a hearing he didn't need to be at. Uh, No, he told people a murder occurred and that he was a witness of a murder. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. He fabricated a death, a murder. He said that he was shot twice and there was a bunch of people that helped him do it. 
And I'm not going to sit here with you today and analyze whether their heart was in the right place. I'm not going to sit here with you today and analyze whether or not they had the best of intentions because the road to hell is paved with good intentions. They don't mean squat. What means something is outcomes. And we're going to analyze how and uh, what these um, outcomes uh, came about for all of them and for Marcus himself. Hmm. Here's this uh, little clip of John Gonzalez sharing the live stream of Marcus fake dying on, on you know, faking the uh, gunshots, shooting, yeah. the shooting, and, and his he's begging for his life. Hmm. No, no, Here's October a clip. 31st. Yeah. Marcus Mitchell, my little nephew, has been shot. He's in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. And uh, I spoke with Mitra. Messages are still coming in. Um, evidently, he was shot twice in the ribs. I'm fucking dying. Help me. I have enough time to die, you guys. just you just watched two performances yeah two okay because one of those is a man pretending that he got shot mm -hmm. and the first question when when i was sent that video that was the first video i saw by the way when i was sent that video the first question i had was why is he holding up a phone of a live stream that is blank for those of you that are listening, you can't see this, but he was holding, this is a guy named John Gonzalez, mm -hmm. who's been prominently uh, featured in uh, panel discussions, movies, documentaries about Standing Rock. He's uh, in tight with all of the leadership out at Standing Rock that um, collected millions and millions of dollars for Sacred Stone that are con continuing to go around the country talking about protecting the water and the water protectors and all this uh, and, and I say it with this disdain because I know that these people uh, were um, close to and or ordered the uh, kidnapping of Mary Trujillo and the framing of an innocent woman, uh, Kathleen Bennett, who ended up spending six months in jail. We were able to exonerate her, get her out of jail and get her mother and her uh, reunited. But it, it, it was a, a, a whole host of people that are still in leadership that have never been punished for their lives that are now going around doing this disaster relief work same people so of course i'm watching very closely 
because this isn't their first scam. It's their like bajillionth scam. <laughs> I've been <laughs> I've been documenting all of them. Oh yeah, yeah. From sure. the from the cold fusion to the uh, <laughs> the slaves on Mars. Slaves I mean, on people, Mars. Yeah. There's some crazy things that these people have come up with, and I don't know how people can buy it. This is why I'm having a discussion with you about lies and liars and who, how do you, how, how do you get to be able to know the difference between somebody lying and somebody telling the truth? Well, first of all, you need to be able to tell the difference. Mm-hmm. You need, be, need to be able to go, huh, this doesn't look right. That's right. This doesn't pass the smell test. If you spend your time, we have a saying in Spanish. Dime con quién andas y te, te diré quién eres. Tell me who you're with and I'll tell you who you are. Mm-hmm. Because if you spend time with liars and in lies, you will not be able to tell the truth anymore. Your tongue will become forked and it will fight against you like Sarah Huckasans oh, did yeah. <laughs> the other day when she was dispack the Viking. That's right. She couldn't even talk anymore. You can't tell the truth anymore when you spend all of your time with liars or mm-hmm. listening to lies or telling lies. And if you're a lie enabler, if you give them a pass, if, if uh, you are the, per- the type of person that congratulates people for doing the bare minimum when they get caught lying, then you too will have a hard time telling the difference between the truth and a lie. And you will become more and more clouded until you can't see no more. That's how you have all these blind people that vote against their own self-interest. And vote for people like Trump because they're so blind. And the way you become blind is by not telling the truth, not hearing the truth, and not calling liars out when they lie. You got to get better at doing it. You got to be more consistent. Okay? And you have to do it in the proper way. I'm going to show you how. So when I saw that video, the first thing I thought is, why is he, instead of calling 911 right now and doing a live stream of him, I'm calling 911 right now. I want you guys to hear because yeah. I just heard that this kid was uh, shot in the chest. And of course, I don't want him to die. So instead of doing a live stream of a live stream, I'm going to get medical assistance for this person who I call my nephew. Yeah. Who I say claim to care about so much so that just listening to this live stream of him pretend dying is making me all watery eyed and Mm -hmm. I'm crying over here. I'm having a nervous breakdown. First question I had. Second question I had is why was the live stream of Marcus blank? Why was he live streaming him? Who live streams their own death? Who does that instead of calling 911? And why wasn't that John Gonzalez's first question? Exactly. Why weren't they thinking, wait a minute, why is this guy live streaming his being shot instead of calling the cops? Why is he begging for someone else to call the cops for him when you're holding a damn phone live streaming yourself? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why doesn't that logically jump into your mind as a question? Um, I don't know. Like I said, either you are in on it or you're so stupid that you can be sucked into things like this. Either way, you're a danger to people. Yeah. Either way, you are not trustworthy, okay? Because you're too gullible to be trusted. And then the second thing was that listening to him, he doesn't sound like a person that's been shot twice in the chest because if you are shot twice, you cannot breathe. Yeah. You yeah. cannot talk. Mm hmm. And you certainly don't get discharged from the hospital in uh, the day after. Mm-hmm. The, 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 I mean, just it's like, yeah. okay. So let's examine. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Did, did you hear him plainly say two shots? He was shot yeah. twice. Mm-hmm. And then he put up a bogus uh, x-ray from 12 years ago that doesn't belong to him, but belonged instead to a journal that was posted by a Japanese uh, person. And it has one bullet. Not two bullets. That's true. He said, I have two bullets in my ribs. That's what he just said in that recording mm-hmm. that you heard him That's saying right. to John Gonzalez. By the time he posted this x-ray of him in the hospital, supposedly, it was down to one. Mm-hmm. And by the way, if you put up that post, uh, that x-ray again, um, what they don't tell you is that if you just look at the trajectory of that bullet, he would have had to have gotten shot in the clavicle. And if you read the uh, the x-ray uh, information that goes along with this, it actually tells you that there is a clavicle 
that is uh, ra- uh, the left neck clavicle, right? A subcutaneous mm-hmm. emphysema of the left neck and a fracture of the left clavicle. <clears throat> a fracture of the clavicle. That's the, the bones up here in your shoulders because the trajectory of the bullet would have had to come through his shoulder, not through his chest. So the people that were sharing this x-ray and could see the, the direction that is pointed, that it's shattered the clavicle bone up at the top, they were too stupid to note oh, wow, there's only one bullet. They still shared this x-ray everywhere and asked pe- people for money. People like Lolly B, John Gonzalez, a lot of the the, the, the people that uh, we've featured on here before have having uh, some negative impact on the Kathleen Bennett story were all parading this lie around social media. That's right. And then just a reminder that that uh, photograph, that x-ray was actually... Uh, uh, Marcus uh, Mitchell had posted that saying, this is an x-ray of my chest. And people did a reverse Google search and found that it had been posted in 2006 on a medical website. And so that, that, that x-ray wasn't even a real x-ray of him. It was one they just found on Google and put up there and said, these are my injuries. This is my x-ray. I'm not just saying that he's a liar. I'm saying he's a bad liar. I'm saying he is such a horrible liar that... Even a cursory look at the lies that he has told would make any person with even a couple of neurons to rub together for a brain question them. And yet somehow all of these people were duped. Yeah. But they're good people and they had their hearts in the right place. Uh But the question I have is where where the hell was their brain? Where were their heads? Who cares about their heart? Do they have a brain? Mm -hmm. Can they use it to think? Because nobody, and I mean nobody, would think that this is logically true or even possible. I mean, whether you listened to that crazy live stream or even thought about the fact that this guy was live streaming himself getting shot without putting any, the camera on himself, Mm -hmm. completely blank, nobody questioned any of it along the way at any point okay so again uh that was what i was thinking along the way this is not possible this is not possible this is not possible how are all these other people thinking it is Mm -hmm. and then um orlando by the way some people okay some people did start to question it there were people out that they started to question whether or not Marcus was really shot or was really injured in some way. And Mitra posted uh, a video. I talked about it as well. I didn't share it with you, but I did tell you there was a woman named Mitra Sin, I mm-hmm. think, or Sign, Sign, I don't yeah. know, but that Mitra had put it a put, put, uh, uh, a live stream out telling people to call the police. Yeah. Right? And so she not only did that, she also validated the idea that he had been shot by telling mm-hmm. people he's out on Center Avenue. This is uh, a very big street. She, too, did not verify. But she has a, a story with him. There's a background with mm-hmm. those two. And so when a person that has a background that you have given uh, celebrity status as being the hero of Standing Rock that pulled you off the bridge then you have a responsibility for what you put forward about that person. And what you put forward about that person was questionable, even to you, probably sooner than you're willing to admit. And I'm going to show you that Mitra knew and or should have known and or should have notified all of you a lot sooner of this deceit Mm -hmm. because she knew it. And I think that the reason why she and so many others didn't immediately come forward and say, "Uh, look, um, this guy is a liar is because they feel stupid because they feel stupid about the fact that they agreed with the lie. They went along with the lie, even though they thought or felt like something was wrong. And that is exactly how you should feel. You need to sit in that feeling of, boy, I did something really wrong. I knew something was wrong with this story. I had the, um, uh, all of these uh, signs and red flags that went up that I should have uh, paused and and said, wait a minute, 
I, I don't want to, I don't want to do something uh, where I'm promoting a lie. But instead of actually checking further into that feeling, you decided to go ahead and go along with the lie because you didn't want to confront the liar. And that should make you feel wrong. It should make you feel bad. And you need to sit with that bad feeling so you don't do it again. You need to feel bad. You need to have a consequence that reminds you not to do that again. Because if you give yourself a pass, if you give each other a pass, if you soothe each other out of that feeling, it will happen again and again and again. And that is exactly what some of these people are promoting. Because their hearts were in the right mm -hmm. place and they wanted to act out of love. And that's just the kind of people that they are. So are you actually telling me then that not only do you not feel sorry that you promoted this heinous lie of a murder that did not happen, of gunshots that never occurred, of scamming people out of thousands of dollars for no reason? And you're going to you're going to follow that up with a uh I was duped yeah. and also sorry, not sorry, because I'm a good person anyway. I was trying <laughs> to help someone. No, I'm sorry, man. You, you, you just showed yourself to be a hypocrite and an untrustworthy person. Mm -hmm. If your reaction to being caught in a situation where you were duped like that is not to uh, take uh, inventory of yourself as a human being and go, wow. There is something seriously wrong with my ability to confront lies and liars. I am so weak and pathetic at doing this that I am a danger to myself and to others because I'm promoting this nonsense. I'm enabling this nonsense. I got to tell the world I screwed up. I am wrong. I am a liar. I don't even know if I can trust myself anymore. Hmm. And I don't think you should. And I, I am sorry for that, but I need to step back. And, and stop being an advocate, stop being somebody that's promoting things when I don't, I don't have the trustworthiness to be promoting stuff when I'm lying. And if you know what, if people don't trust me anymore as a result of the lies I put out, that's what happens. That's called the consequences yes. of your actions. That's what it's called. Okay. So here's what. Orlando and Marcus did because let me tell you Orlando has done two apology videos which I don't think are apologies at all mm -hmm. and I'm gonna tell you why I'm gonna break it down for you but let me show you how Orlando and Marcus did a video as people were starting to attack Marcus as a liar some people had the honesty to go you know what it doesn't look this right. guy's a scammer and I think that he's lying to people and I need to go out and protect people from this lie and people like Orlando doubled down on the lie people like Orlando knew he knew he's gonna tell you himself he knew something was wrong again just like Mitra said she kind of saw something was wrong but went along with it anyway they went along with it anyway. You'll hear them say this. Dan, the, the glass man, I'm going to mm -hmm. play a clip of him too. He's a, But I knew there was something wrong, but I just went along with it. Then you're an enabler and you're responsible for that BS too. Okay? And you're not a trustworthy person. And if people don't want to follow you anymore or see you as a per, You can still be uh, uh, Facebook friends with someone that you know to be untrustworthy but i wouldn't have them advocating or speaking on behalf of anyone that's right you know what i'm saying oh yeah these people want to continue to be leaders like Mulaney does mm -hmm. in missing and murdered indigenous woman after she kidnapped and nearly killed one and sent her to definitely sent her to an early grave after she put an innocent woman in jail sorry you don't get to do that you don't get to be part of activate now where you have one of where you're where you're cover using your media platform to cover up a rape and a kidnapping and then expect people to support your disaster relief efforts okay you can't associate yourself with this level of deceit and criminality and then tell me that you want to be in charge of anything that has to do with protecting vulnerable people anything and you certainly don't get to call yourself a water protector or a standing rock hero of anything. Right. Yes. So 
let me just show you why he deleted this video. He deleted this video because he is now saying in his apology clips, um, you know, and so is Dan the Glass Man. So is a lot of the people that are defending this mm -hmm. nonsense, still defending this nonsense that Marcus did. And saying, this is what they're saying as they're defending this nonsense. They're saying, hey, guess what? It doesn't really matter uh, that... Um, that Orlando and Mitra and Dan the Glassman and John Gonzalez mm -hmm. posted all of this stuff. The only person that's really responsible for the lie here is only Marco, Marcus Mitchell. He's yeah. the only one responsible for this lie. He's the only one responsible for hurting people. Don't you dare. Don't you dare accuse any one of these other people of having any responsibility for this lie and for spreading this lie and for being authors of creating this lie. Why do they want to do that? Why are they saying that to me? Why are they telling that to you? You know why? Because they don't want to be held accountable for the wrong they did. Mm -hmm. All of them. They don't want to be held accountable for the wrong they did. And you don't fix something like this. People don't get better at being human beings unless you confront their BS as well. And Orlando can now say, because he took down this video that I'm about to show you in its entirety and uh, unedited so that you can uh, see for yourself exactly what he did say, okay, and how he said it. Not just what he said, but how he said it, okay? Because he now wants to tell you and everyone else wants to tell you they don't really remember. That's right. They don't remember what he said. He might have said something about how mm -hmm. he was the one that changed the bandage. So he he was vouching for the gunshot being real because he saw it. He saw the wound. Okay. And the fact of the matter is that he now wants to say, well, you know, I might have said something like that. I don't know because I took down my own video. So you can't call me out on it. <laughs> but I'm going to pretend now that, you know, whether or not I did or not didn't doesn't really matter. Because you know what? Orlando's not a doctor. <laughs> he ain't a doctor. You know, right? So it's okay that he made a video calling people out. So as people were deciding that this was a hoax, that this was a lie, that this guy was spreading lies and trying to con people off of a false criminal um a, a story where, where a person, his friend, his imaginary friend was murdered and he was dying because of two gunshot wounds that he received to his chest. This man, and he, he went to pick him up at a McDonald's. He says that this guy was sitting at a McDonald's for five hours, okay? Mm -hmm. he, he saw him in person and he said in, in later apology videos that he knew there were some things that were fishy, mm -hmm. but he went ahead and made this video and he scolded people for saying that it was a hoax. That's what this video was. This was a video to tell all of the people that were calling out this lie to shut up. That's what Orlando did wrong. Mm -hmm. He didn't just lie. He didn't just support and spread the lie of Marcus. He decided he was going to attack the people that were confronting the lie. That's why he made the video to tell all of them to shut up and apologize and send money to him because this gunshot is real. That's what this video is about. Watch for yourselves. All right, over here on this side. Just had it. What's going on? What's going on, everybody? All right, let's let's go. What's going on, everybody? How's everybody doing? Hope everyone's doing good. Um, I know there's a lot of people. I wanted you guys to hear it first. So I'm with somebody right now. I'm, I'm actually carrying them. 
carrying a backpack and there's there's gonna be some stuff going on and um, you know a lot of people been wondering is it true is it really true well you guys know me and I ain't gonna lie to you and it is true and I had to do a little um, networking and trying to find a certain person and I found him and, and he's here with me I got him to uh, stay and, and rest he has a ride that's coming for him um, but you know I, I think he's he's still gonna need some need some support he's gonna need people to help him to get up back up to uh, Standing Rock he's got a, a court hearing okay so yeah I just wanted to clear some stuff up and you know things are fine those of you that really want to know what what's going on you guys can hit me up and I tell you the truth because I, I I was there I seen him I did I'm alive. Uh, yeah I'm alive. I was a straight bullet I was minding my business you know what the doctor told me? He said it was a 1 in 25 million shot. 1 in 25 million. Because the last time this happened to a little girl, a little white girl in the South Valley of Albuquerque. Back in 94. And like, I, asked, I asked him, like, the doctor asked me, he's like, well, so what do you think you got shot by? And he was, and I was like, a rifle? And he's all like, son, what we pulled out of you was a 45 caliber bullet. And, and he's all like, you're supposed to be dead right now. Or by God's grace, or somehow you survived. And as I said, I was minding my business. I was in Albuquerque, walking down Central Avenue. And there were some people in front of me, probably about 80 to 100 yards. And, um, the um, um, I asked him, like, what do you think happened? And I usually, I'm like, yeah, I'm alive, shit, you know. But he said, like, what happened was they fired a big old widespread like that. You know, um, and he got hit by one bullet. And we, we actually changed out his, I changed out his wound the other day. So this is real. This is real. This was this wasn't a joke. He wasn't trying to pull a joke. Like there was some people saying he was trying to be jokeful or trying to get his views up or whatever. But whoever those people are, I want them to come on Facebook and do an apology, please. You now do an apology. And if you're not gonna apologize, at least help him out. Send him some money so he can get to where no. he needs to. No. You know? no. Yeah. I don't so I don't um, need to play. It was a last minute thing to go and pick him up. I was in a meeting and, and I finally got a hold of him and he said he was sitting there for five hours at McDonald's because they released him because he didn't have insurance. Um, and you know, it's a crazy ordeal, but you know, we're gonna get it all handled, all worked out. But I just wanted people to know he's okay, he's alive. It was real what happened. You know, he was just in shock when when those things happened, you know, and that is what it is. I'll tell you guys this. I'm alive. I'm well. But what the doctor told me, he said it was the grace of God, whatever happened. I can't pick anything up. I have a few bro a broken rib, fracture, fractured, you know, ribs. I'm, I'm messed up. The, the bullet, it hit a bus stop. And our bus stops in Albuquerque, they're very thin with a very thin metal sheet. It hit that bullet, and that bullet hit that, sh that, and it slowed it down, and it hit me. And I fell, and I went into shock, and I seen, a, I seen lights, and I, I didn't know Central Avenue was right behind me. I fell in shock, and 
just, you know, started walking and fell in there and I wanted to be able to try to have people buy me or one thing, I thought people, oh boy, he told me, son, if you ever get shot, you need you to breathe in and out, in and out. And if you can, turn yourself over to your stomach so you don't clog up and you don't suffocate from your blood. I thought of my grandmother with birth. And I thought of my father. I thought of these three people and I just stayed and the cops cruised by right after that and my phone died and you know, it just it all stopped and I, uh, my grandmother, you know, she was she was saying, Give me your hand, son, give me your hand, son, I have my hand up and I was just laying there and just like, you know what happened was you know, the cops had the spotlight on me. You know, the cops had the spotlight and you know, it's it's something that we gotta be able to do for us, you know. Those those cops they took me and put my ambulance. Rushed me all the way to the hospital. guys want to see it again? Came back to the room last night and changed out the bandage. So, um, so that's the updates we got for you. So, um, you know, I don't want a lot of people worrying out there. So, uh, thank you guys for all your support. Everything you guys do, please, please share it out for me, please. I got to get back to uh, doing some stuff and. Love y'all. Don't forget to pray because it's important and it really works. Right here, all those prayers you guys did helped them pull through. So thank you guys. Thank you guys. You're gonna try and promote prayer while you're lying? Seriously? Yeah. I mean, that's no better to me. That is no different than Trump being the person that incited the terrorist attack that took the life of 11 people. And then showing up to the memorial unwelcomed because and and speaking out against the hate and division he sowed that he incited this is the same type of hogwash and like a child throwing a tantrum Orlando and the people that promoted this uh, BS don't want you to hold them accountable. Don't want you to see the truth. Okay. He said, I want to go over some of what he said right there. All right. He said, people want to know the truth for the very beginning of this video. He was there to address the fact that people were calling Marcus a liar. That is what he was addressing in the video. He says, people want to know whether or not Marcus really got shot. I am here to break the tie. I am here to be the person that gives you the real skinny on this. You all know me and you know I don't lie. I tell the truth. I was there. I seen him. Okay, that's those are his exact words. If you don't believe me, you can go back and watch this one and my show is done. He said, I did. I did. He said, he got shot with one bullet. What happened to the other bullet? that we just heard John Gonzalez say was in his body. Mm -hmm. How did this guy who found out about this shooting from presumably the same videos I've showed you that were available online about this nonsense and not go, wait a minute, there was two bullets. Yeah. How did the one, where does that? And then you even hear Marcus in there say, "My, I, one of my ribs is fractured. Mm -hmm. And then he says, no, I have two fractured ribs. He forgot his own lie. Did he get <laughs> shot with two bullets? Did he get shot with one bullet? Who knows? He, uh, Orlando goes on to say, he was shot with one bullet. This was real. He's talking about the shooting. Yeah. I changed out his bandage the other day. He doesn't just tell you he changed out the bandages once. He tells you two times That's right. to emphasize, to embellish on the lie. No one told him he had to tell everybody that he was a witness to the wound because he's changed the bandages twice. And he said he changed the bandage the other day. And then at the end of the video, go back and watch it. He says, last night 
I changed out the bandage. Mm -hmm. I changed it out twice, according to what he says in this video. So he really wants to emphasize that for all of you people out there saying this is a hoax and this is a lie and Marcus wasn't shot, I'm here to double down and say, I like, you know, like uh, the guy that sticks his hand, the doubting Thomas, the guy that sticks his hand in Jesus's wound. Oh, that's right. He says, I was there. I <laughs> stuck my hand in the wound. This is what Orlando is saying. I was there. I looked at the wound. So for you people out there that are saying that this wasn't real, you need to apologize. You need to do a video apologizing. You need to retract what you said about my friend who has been shot. Never mind his dead friend. Mm -hmm. None of them, neither of them addressed the fact that there was a murder involved, yeah. according to Marcus, the liar, the father of lies. Hmm. <laughs> right? He authored this horrible lie. But these other people, they co-signed it. Make no mistake. They co-signed it. They weren't just duped. They co-signed. They added their own pair of graph. Okay. They inserted themselves into the lie and they added to it. So he embellished upon that lie. He said it was real what happened. And he said there was a... Uh, uh, then uh, Marcus tells you that there was a bullet hit the bus stop and yeah. it went into his body yeah. and he, he saw a light and his mm -hmm. ancestors were talking to him. Mm -hmm. Look at how this guy is lying right in front of Orlando. You were watching that, uh, listening to that with me. Uh, for those of you who are listening on the radio and didn't get to see the video, go check it out on kppfm.com mm -hmm. or YouTube. But also, let me just tell you, that he wasn't in the the live stream very much. You hear no. Marcus's voice, but for the most part, he doesn't show his face. Orlando is the one who gave him the phone, or this is Orlando's phone. Orlando's the one that's doing the live stream, and Orlando can see that Marcus cannot show his face. Mm -hmm. He knows he cannot show his face, and yet you want me to believe you think he was duped? You want me to believe that when he's standing right in front of the guy lying to his face, can't show his face on the live stream? I'm sorry. I don't buy it. Mm. He also says that, um, you know, he wants you to believe that he he was just trying to help out a friend. Mm. He He just literally, but once again, he says that he changed the bandage. He tells you twice. And he tells the people that were confronting this lie, you need to apologize, okay? Because I'm Orlando, the truth teller, and I am here to double down on Marcus's lie. I mean, I just don't know how you can sell me that nonsense. Sorry. Um, Orlando said that he saw him and that he didn't lo look like he had been shot in other videos yeah, that he made. Later videos. Yeah, yeah, but he said he looked like maybe he got his ass kicked, but not like he had been shot. Why aren't you conveying your... Doubt. Doubt in this in any way in this video. Why he doesn't even... He's like, listen, he's scolding. scolding yeah. He's scolding. In the, in the videos I'm about to show you, Orlando is apologizing and he's trying to make it seem like he was just an innocent babe in the woods and mm -hmm. he didn't have any idea that this person could be so deceitful. He's very hurt by the deceit as well. He's a victim. Now he's the victim, you see. <laughs> he victimized a bunch of people by putting out this nonsense, which he knew to be a lie and getting money from people. But now, now that he's been caught, he's a victim. So you know what, if you want to hate him, you want to be a mean person like that, you want to have hate in your heart and darkness in your mind, then go right ahead. But you're going to be the worst person for it, not him. He's going to keep on loving and living the light. That's, that's the essence of the BS that you're going to hear coming out of these <laughs> folks. I'm going to tell you why it's nonsense and why we can't put up with it. Okay, here is Orlando apology clip. Just just a taste. I'm not going to play the whole thing. Yep. Well, I'm going to say it. 
I got duped. I got conned. I got conned. That's what happened. I got conned. Um, I know I did a live feed and uh, <clears throat> no, it didn't. Uh, I sh I should have I should have actually checked and seen his boon. All I seen was it was taped up in an area. So I pretty much took his word for it. I pretty much took his word for it and saying he was hurt. He played it off very well. You know, and um, while he was here and he stayed here, I was busy with Comic-Con, as a lot of you already know. And he was upstairs, so he was staying, sleeping in the room and doing whatever he was doing. I don't know what he was doing. But my friend was going up there. My friend was went up there that we're sharing the room with to go check on him and make sure that that he was okay because I reached out to my friend and said, "Hey, I have a buddy that that has been shot and you know, he needs a place to stay." So that's what that's what happened. That's what happened. And then when I went to go pick him up, you know, he said he couldn't carry his bag and stuff, you know, he was he really looked like he was in pain. But I never did actually see him clean the wound. He went into the bathroom and he said he was going to go and change it. And he changed it. But while we were downstairs here doing the event, he had he had taken a shower. So when he took a shower, I knew right away. I was like, no, that ain't right. Because if you have stitches, you can't take a shower for, for a few days until it he heals up. And not only that. All the bandages, everything that he he took off were left there in the room. So I have all that evidence. I have all that evidence. So he was really faking the whole thing. And, and I was getting messages from different people telling me different stories. They were all different. So I just wanted to clear that up with people because, you know, that's, uh, you know, I felt bad when other people were uh, lashing out on him. You know, and I want to apologize to those people, and I want to say I'm sorry. But I didn't know that he was really faking the whole thing. And I'm trying to take care of things here, what I'm I'm doing, you know. So yeah, it, it's 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 pretty whacked. And I actually sent him the message, and I showed him the evidence. And when I did that, not a couple of hours later when all of that stuff happened and he admitted because he knew what we had evidence that he was faking the whole thing and it was going to come out and that's what he did and then he I guess he deleted his whole Facebook his, sto his stories just kept changing different people were telling me different things and he's gone already. He left. You know, he said that he had to make court. I don't know how, how true that is, too, now, you know. So I'm just like, you know, I was, I was, very, I was very disappointed. My, my friend was very disappointed. He, he was like, I can't believe he did that. I can't believe he did that to you after you had him come and stay and, and, and sleep here. When you could have been out going doing other stuff, you watched over you watched over this guy because you thought he was hurt too. And my friend will vouch for me, and he's like, "Let's go! I will go with you." I was a witness too. You know, he was there hanging out with us. He didn't even go out and go to events that he was he was supposed to go to. You know, so um, I just wanted to get get the air cleared. You know, and. You know, it's it's unfortunate that that he he used me, and some of you people actually sent him some money. But I am nowhere affiliated with any of the the BS that he's doing. I am not affiliated. Uh, I heard that his one of his his account got frozen, so he wasn't able to get money. I and you know I don't I don't really know. I just went on on what he told me. I went on his word, and he was not a man of his word. You know, I didn't see no discharge papers or anything. I, I so you know, I, I I seriously don't know what's going on. You know, if he really needed help, he should have just 
been honest and said, hey, I need help to get there. Instead of trying to use different people to get money, you know, because that's not me. That's not me. And that's why I had to come on here and apologize to anybody, any of you that I might have offended by, you know, when I did go on the live feed with him. And I let, I gave him my phone so he could talk. And I didn't know what he was saying. I didn't even go back to the, to the live feed. So. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about there. Um, he didn't even know what Marcus said on the live stream. <laughs> he gave him his phone and just walked away, went to some other place. He had no idea what Marcus said on the live stream. Because anybody analyzing, as I just told you, Listen, how are you giving him your phone and doing the live stream and hear him say all this nonsense into this live stream and not go, huh, that don't sound right. Also, he just told you in this apology video that he put up um, that he uh, he didn't have um anything to do with him while he was there because he was busy doing his own thing at comic-con mm -hmm. you know so he was up there sleeping or whatever he was doing who knows what he was doing up there in that room uh he also talks about the fact that people told him that he looked like he was drunk on the live stream he thinks maybe yeah he maybe he was drinking who knows uh but you know he was in there in that room he got him a place to stay at his friend's house and he was over there and you know orlando's busy doing his comic-con thing so he wasn't like watching him the whole time he never saw the wound he never saw the the bandages uh in the same video in the same video he says um my friend was so upset because he was like damn man you you weren't able to go do your comic-con stuff and there was a bunch of stuff you could have been doing but instead here you were watching over this guy the whole time it's like he's schizophrenic do you mm -hmm. see how he's also a pathological liar do you not see that oh yeah what what kind of friend, what kind of person uh, tells you that in order to love your fellow man, you're in, you should enable him to lie like this and not say, man, you're screwed up. Yeah. Like you need help. Mm -hmm. Stop lying. Stop lying to me. Stop lying to yourself. Stop trying to piss on me and tell me it's raining. He's not apologizing for what he did. First of all, he's not apologizing for what he did, which was to lie. He's not apologizing for the fact that he um, told people that he was verifying that this person was indeed shot. Mm -hmm. He said it twice. I told you that. How does he start off this video? He starts off by saying, okay, I'm going to say it. Yep. Here it comes. He didn't want to say he was sorry. Yeah. And he didn't. Notice he didn't say, I'm sorry. I lied and I enabled a liar to con people out of money. And it was based on a horrible, horrible lie that he was shot and that someone else was dead. That was the most horrible thing I could have done. But I did it. I feel like a jerk. I decided I was going to be down with whatever my homie from Standing Rock wanted to do or say, even if it's a lie, even if it's criminal, even if it hurts people because we're just down for each other like that. That is the message I've been hearing mm -hmm. over and over again from all of the apologists going all the way back to the Kathleen Bennett case to the present. Because as I have shown you, each and every one of these frauds, phonies, and criminals gets caught doing something heinous the people surrounding them very quietly distance themselves and mm -hmm. never say, I'm sorry I enabled everyone to follow and believe in this rapist, criminal, fraud, what have you. Because you too are enablers. You too have been coddling. You too have a responsibility. All of you who did this, you yes. have a responsibility too. You know, and we, um, as we did the Kathleen Bennett case, um, 
you know, we were exposing Standing Rock phonies, you know, and, and they were a lot of, they were a lot of people that people were propping up to be Standing Rock heroes. And we've continued to do that. We've continued to expose the Standing Rock phonies. And Orlando Cruz actually called us once and left a message on our machine yep. on the calling line mm-hmm. and said, why are you guys hating so much? Why are you being so negative? You know, you got to quit hating on people. And it's like, you know, we're not hating on people. We're exposing liars. We're exposing frauds. And that's what you need to do. You don't need to enable the fraud, enable the liars. You know, so, and right now there's all sorts of people that are backing up and backing away from this. And you're showing a few of them tonight, you know, that, that just uh, want us to believe that, well, they were just duped, you know, they didn't know what's going on. They just, they, you know, they, they basically were taken. They're the victim. And yet they were the perpetrators perpetrators of the lies yeah and you know what here's the thing people have been uh very upset with me because i've been calling out these people because don't i care about the water don't i care about the people of standing rock don't i care about native people yes i care about all of those things but that doesn't mean i have to condone lies frauds and criminals we have to call this out just because people think i'm progressive or I'm a Democrat or whatever it is you want to pigeonhole me into, it doesn't mean I'm going to support crime or graft. Not today, not tomorrow. And so do not conflate the two things. Don't stick them together. I don't have to to support people's lies. And in fact, you know what? I think that the way that you love your brothers and sisters and help them be better human beings is by calling them out on their BS. That's what we're supposed to be doing, not coddling them. So when he comes out on this video and starts off by saying, hey, I'm going to say it. To me, it sounds like a person that doesn't want to tell people, that doesn't want to apologize. He didn't want to do that. He had to because he was caught. And then he didn't even say, I lied. He said, I'm a victim. Yeah. I'm going to come out and say it. Here it is. I'm a victim. Oh, by the way, I deleted that video that would show you that I'm not a victim, yeah. that I was a perpetrator, <laughs> so you can't call me out on it anymore. Mm-hmm. But I just want you to know, I'm a victim too. Okay? And then he says, you know, he lied. First of all, he lied about checking the wound twice. He said that uh, he met this guy when he picked him up at the McDonald's and he couldn't carry his own bag. Mm-hmm. So he played it off very well. He played it off very well. So did you, Orlando. Oh, yeah. Because you also said you didn't see any discharge papers and he didn't look like someone that had been in a gun, you know, like had been shot twice. Yeah. Plus, any person with two neurons to rub together for a brain would know they would never discharge a person that had two gunshot wounds the day after they got shot. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't happen. He showed you an x-ray that would have been commensurate with somebody spending maybe a month or longer in in, in a hospital, okay? And of course, that fake x-ray that he showed you also does not show two bullet entries. He had a hole in his chest, supposedly, where the bandage was in the front of his body, where he would have had to have been shot in the shoulder for the trajectory of the bullet that you saw on the fake x-ray to have occurred, okay? Ah, so there's so many, there's so many red flags that are so obvious. I just, I don't know how you can believe that somebody simply was naive or gullible. Uh, But if you want to believe that they're still dangerous people because they're too stupid to be able to tell the difference between a truth and a lie. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's just keep it there. Let's just keep it a hundred and be real. If somebody is too gullible, too stupid, to be able to tell the difference, you shouldn't be taking advice from them and they shouldn't be in any leadership role where they're, where they're uh, in charge of anything important or in charge of vulnerable people. He says that he was busy, but in the video that he deleted, he said that he had changed the bandage twice and vehemently denied that this gunshot thing was a lie or a hoax yeah. and demanded an apology. But then he's telling you in this apology video, he was too busy to really... Just met the guy, really. (laughs) Don't know him very well, but, uh, you know, just helping the guy out. Let me tell you something. And uh, he said he really looked like he was in pain, but in the same video, he tells you he didn't see any discharge papers. And he didn't seem like a person that had been shot. 
So which is it? Are you still trying to make excuses for this man? Because it sounds like you are even in your apology video. You're still trying to give Marcus wiggle room. You're stri by, by, by trying to sell us the lie that you were a victim and that you were also tricked, you're trying to create the possibility that the information that you saw right before your eyes, which you claim should have been something that was a red flag that told you that you shouldn't believe this guy. And that in this video, you're saying, I noticed the stuff that made me not really believe him, but you still did your live stream. You still did a live stream after you said you didn't believe him. So you did it on purpose. And enabling people to lie, giving people who are uh, sorry that they got caught but not sorry for what they did, uh, a platform, support, and love, that's not real love. It isn't real acceptance. That's not real kindness. It is evil. Lies beget more lies, and evil begets more evil, greater evil. Not just more quantities of it, but greater and greater I am trying, uh, he says he's trying to take care of what he's doing, which is the Comic-Con thing, I'm assuming. Um, he says that he showed, or he showed uh, Marcus the evidence he collected. Yeah. What, what, what evidence? Is he now going to take on a criminal investigation against Marcus? Or, or is he just going to call Scooby-Doo here? No. Because <laughs> I don't understand why he keeps talking about this. He's collected the evidence, so now he's got the drop on Marcus. You enabled him to scam people and now you're going to act like you're going to bring the hammer down on him when you won't even admit what you did wrong? Really? I'm supposed to believe that? Mm. Orlando then goes on to say that because he collected this evidence and confronted Marcus with it, that's the reason why Marcus said he lied. Of course, it would have had nothing to do with the fact that I showed everybody on my show that it couldn't possibly have happened. <laughs> It couldn't have been that the fact that he was caught and exposed and that they knew that they had to tell the truth. That couldn't have been it. No, no. Orlando's the true hero. Orlando collected the bandages without any blood <laughs> yeah. that tend to incriminate him more mm -hmm. because he saw them and he didn't immediately tell all of you about it. And he confronted or he confronted Marcus so he actually was the one that got Marcus to tell the truth. Yeah. So in the end, He's a hero. he actually is a good guy. Mm -hmm. He's a hero because mm -hmm. he got Marcus to come forward and tell the truth. And he actually says, so I actually did something good there. Yeah. He's like patting himself on the back <laughs> he, he, in the same video where he's apologizing for the thing that he doesn't want to apologize for and doesn't really ever apologize for. He immediately pats himself on the back forgives himself and pats himself for being a good person. Wow. This is some nonsense mm -hmm. people. He says, um, he was watching over the sky instead of going and doing the stuff he could have been doing at comic con. So which is it? Were you watching over this guy or were you too bu busy doing your own thing to know what he was doing over at your friend's house while he was sleeping? He says he used me. I'm sorry that he used me. That's what he's sorry for, yeah. by the way. It's the only time he said he was sorry. But he didn't say he was sorry to you and to all of the people that he duped. He duped. Mm -hmm. Not just Marcus. Yeah. He did it too with yep. him. Exactly. And he says nothing about that, but he is sorry he got used. Um, nowhere, he says, I am nowhere affiliated with this guy. I think you are. Yeah. You affiliated yourself. Nobody told you to tell the lie about how you changed his bandage twice. That was all you, buddy. No one told you to tell people that were calling him out on his lie to apologize for even questioning him and putting your name in front of it and saying, you know, I don't lie. I am here to be the truth teller of what really happened. And yes, he was really shot. I saw it with my own two eyes. Mm -hmm. He did an Olivia bias. Hell yeah. <laughs> I saw it with my own two eyes. Mm -hmm. She called me a liar when I said that Melanie Stoneman faked the whole thing and that Bill Running Fisher faked this crime. She called me a liar and she said she knows for a fact that what Melanie said was true because she saw it with her own two eyes. 
This is the same kind of nonsense. I have seen it before. And I had a lot of people that were out at Standing Rock tell me, well, you know, Olivia, she was, she, her heart was in the right oh, place. Oh, yes, that's right. They're so, they're, you know, they were trying to do good things. One of the paramedics that sent Mary to the hospital, um, her name, she went by the name of Eight Ball out at the camp. Jessica Piercy is her real name on Facebook, told me, I know what you think of my girl, Olivia Bias. What, that she's a liar? Yeah. Yes. That's what I think of these people. They are dangerous because they are so comfortable lying. Lies that put people in danger. Lies that put lives at risk and lives that put people behind bars who were innocent. That's what these people are willing to do. This is what Marcus and Orlando are capable of. They're capable of doing a lie that is this big and hurts this many people. So I say you need to watch your back. I say you need to be wary of them. Um, here's the second Orlando apology clip. I just want to show you again a little piece of his nonsense because you will see that he is not sorry for what he did. He's just sorry that you're unfriending him, that you won't buy his merch no more, and that he has lost credibility because he co-signed probably one of many, many lies. Clip. On the video, I, I said I, I was going to help change his, his wounds or his bandages. I might have said that. But, I ne I, like I said, I never really got to see the wound. And, and, and I'm not a doctor. I mean, I helped him get all his stuff. But I'm not a doctor. You know, I didn't really see the wound. And plus, I have the evidence up in the room. So as we were talking about it, I went to go use the restroom. And then I looked where the shower was at, and lo and behold, there's a bandage. The bandage that he took off from here, he set it up there. <clears throat> so I looked at it. There was no blood. So we grabbed one of the trash bags, flipped it inside out, grabbed it, put it in there. So it only has his fingerprints on it. It will not have my fingerprints on it. So you know, that's how I can prove that. And when I sent him all of that stuff, two hours later, two hours later, that's when he posted that everything was a total lie to a lot of people. And see if I would have been in contact with Mitra, I would have known that she dropped him off at McDonald's and I would have never picked him up because she would have told me he didn't want to ride to South Dakota and that he was just trying to use people for money. I wouldn't have even bugged with him. I wouldn't have even helped him out. So Orlando yeah. says he he collected this evidence. That's right. He's... Why is he collect? He, he, he tells you, okay, but I'm going to ask the question anyway. It's a rhetorical question. Right. Why would you collect evidence of a crime that you participated in? <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Mm. Let me answer that for you. To extort money out of the person you committed the crime with. Oh, there you go. What? Uh, give, me some of, <sighs> give me some of the change you Because collected. otherwise, if you just want the truth to be known, if you just want the truth to be told, why don't you just tell the public right away? Also... Think about this for a minute. He told you, go back and watch these videos on your own. But just know that when I speak, cuando digo que la burra es pinta es porque tengo los pelos en la mano. When I tell you that the donkey is spotted, it's because I'm holding its hairs in my hand. Okay? So, I got receipts for this, but if you want to, you can go check it out for yourself. He tells you that when he did that video, when he did that live stream with Marcus, mm -hmm. he already had somebody come in to pick him up. So by that point, he was he was about to leave. And, and you know, in this video, the second apology video, he says that. And he says that, you know, he got mad at him afterwards because he was already gone. So when he took a shower, supposedly, he went into the bathroom and he noticed that there was no blood on on the bandage so he collected the bandage before 
the guy left. He saw yeah. all of this before he left and he still did the live stream and he still lied. And then Marcus left and he didn't tell you that he didn't see discharge papers, that he didn't look like somebody that had gotten shot by a gun, but instead maybe kicked, had his butt kicked in a fight that he um, took a shower, which nobody that had just gotten, you know, uh, stitches would do that he was discharged because of this bogus thing about how he didn't have insurance when no hospital would discharge you after one day for two bullet wounds. And he told you he was hit by one bullet when the original video told you there was two because, again, he is orchestrating the lie mm -hmm. along with him. But why would you do that if you're not partners in dimes yeah. and not just partners in crimes? And I think that what happened is he called him and he said, I got this evidence. Yeah. I'm going to use it against you if you don't give me some money. <laughs> if you don't, uh, you know, split it down the middle. Because you know he didn't have to come up here. You know yeah. he didn't come up yeah. here. And Orlando is, if, if Orlando is speaking, he's lying. If he's moving his mouth, he's lying. When he tells you at the beginning of his video... I don't lie. I'm not going to lie in this video. I'm about to tell you some stuff that is not a lie. He's lying. And in this video, he tells you, Marcus isn't even here anymore. He left because he had to go to court. But I don't even know if he really had to go to court. He immediately <laughs> tells you yeah. he knows it's a lie. But he tells you <laughs> that Marcus is gone. You really think he came up here? Huh? I don't think so. No, I don't think so either. If you have this evidence against him, Orlando, and you know of a crime he committed against people, why didn't you go and tell the police in Albuquerque about the crime and show them your evidence? Because you're full of boop. Yep. Yes. That's why. And here's one of Dan the Glassman. I don't know these guys. Mm -hmm. I've never met them, never talked to them, but I think they're full of beep. <laughs> I do. I think they're full of beep. Oh, yeah. Here's Dan the Glass Man making his excuses for why he shared this nonsense, never checked out a single fact, didn't make sense to him that this stuff, and he's going to tell you too. Mitra tells you, Dan tells you, Orlando tells you, there was something fishy. I should have checked. I should have known better, but I didn't. But you know what? I'm a victim, so don't you dare hold me accountable for duping you, for sharing this nonsense, and for getting your money conned out of your pocket. Okay? Just live in the light. Pray mm -hmm. to Jesus. You know? Here's Dan the Glass Man. I don't know if this was on Halloween night, the night before, the night after, but it's been a pretty crazy weekend uh, with everything going on with Marcus, and <laughs> I just have to say that I am sorry that I re, re uh, that I basically um, relayed a bunch of bogus information and a bunch of bogus, um, bunch of lies. So, um, you know, I was in communication with Marcus directly. He told me he was released from the hospital. So he didn't have any insurance coverage. They basically pumped him up full of drugs, let him sleep, and then released him. That's what he told me. So I just let everyone know what was going on, at least what I was being told. It was all a bunch of hearsay, as I wasn't really there. And then uh, he came on to some of those those posts and uh, even said that he was okay with me relaying that information. And uh, apparently it all turns out to be live. So pretty interesting weekend here, guys. <laughs> but um, it's okay. You know, everything happens for a reason. Truth will always reveal itself, and, you know, the truth is always going to continue to prevail. You know, the light will always show in darkness. And so, I don't know, just all I can suggest is to stay in the light, stay in the truth, know your truth. Uh, no, you can't, you know, you might be able to pull a fast one over on people and humans. 
<laughs> but you are not more powerful than God. And if you really want to play these kind of games, it's a very uh, dangerous game to be playing. So, and I feel really bad for a lot of the people that got involved. I don't know what happened with Orlando. I know that he uh, he definitely did not know what was going on at all, guys. And he was hitting me up uh, the first day of Comic-Con. I think that was maybe on Friday. And he was trying to ask me to get a hold of Marcus. He thought that him and I were buddy-buddy and friends or whatever. And I just, I met him at camp. You know, he was brought in through Mitra. Um, which, you know, that's a whole nother thing now, because Marcus was brought into this whole movement and as Camp Two Dogs, because he was supposedly Mitra's, uh, hero, and the one who picked her up off of the bridge, and, you know, when he first got there, he couldn't really say that it was a hundred percent him but she just kind of went with it and just uh you know i don't know if he just kind of felt like it was forced upon him and so he just kind of went with it um but who knows if he actually was mitra's uh personal hero from standing rock and or if he's just been playing us the whole time Who knows if he's been yeah. telling the truth or is he... And then he, this this guy... Okay, see, this is my beef with him, okay? okay? And I will tell you, out of all of the these liars that lie to themselves, that lied to you, that helped to spread the lie of Marcus, lie to, they're, they're delusional in themselves. And um, what they say is a form of escapism, a form of delusion... And it's a form of gaslighting, and it's a ho form of not being held accountable. And uh, God, it pisses me off because mm -hmm. he's he he's he actually toward the end of this video. Again, you can go and find this on his page if you want to look at it. But Dan the Glass Man goes on to ramble on about how maybe Marcus did get shot. Who knows? Maybe somebody <laughs> broke into his account and deleted his Facebook account. Maybe somebody hacked him. Yeah. I mean. What kind of liar are you to yourself or to other people that you, after knowing that this guy lied about something so horrible, mm -hmm. this wasn't like, a, you know, um, I have a, an injury that I need surgery for. I'm raising money for it when you really don't have any injury or illness. This isn't th that's horrible, too. This is faking a murder. Yeah. He claimed that somebody died and that he has two gun. Like, first of all, I, I want to ask you to, to, to really question whether or not you believe that this is the first time Marcus has told a lie that big. No. I doubt it. Yeah. Because he is very practiced at it. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's the first time that Orlando has covered for a liar? Hmm? Ask yourself. Hmm. Ask yourself these questions. Do you think it's the first time they've ever done something like that? Scammed people with lies. I believe it isn't their first rodeo. I'm just going to just go out on a limb yeah, and yeah. assume that they've done this before. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, well practiced. I think that that doesn't happen like that, you know? Um, also, uh, why is this guy, Dan the Glass Man, absolving Orlando as if, you know, he says some people say that he was say, telling people he saw the wound. I don't know. I don't I, I didn't I, I didn't get to see the video. Somebody told me Orlando did a video with Marcus and, and now that and now it's gone. So you I, know, I don't know if anybody will we'll never it. know. We'll did, never know about that. And it's like, hey, we just showed it to you. <laughs> you know, <it's>, it <laughs> exists still just because he deleted it doesn't mean it still doesn't exist somewhere. He's deliberately gaslighting people. He knows that people have seen a video that clearly showed Orlando lying with Marcus, lying for Marcus, scamming people together, okay? 
he added himself to this hoax, Orlando did. And this guy is covering for him when he knows that what he's doing is gaslighting people who saw that video and clearly saw what I just showed you. Mm -hmm. And Orlando is a big fat liar. Yep. Okay. And he's not sorry because he hasn't apologized for what he did. He's apologizing for something else, for being naive. Sorry, I'm a good person. I was just naive. That's all you can get me on. Yeah. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. So this Dan, the glass man, although he did say he's sorry he spread lies, goes on to muddy the waters to the point where maybe he's not, he didn't need to make that apology because what if Mitchell did get shot? Mm -hmm. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, that is disingenuous. Yeah, definitely. As I'll get out. So mm -hmm. I don't accept that as a, a true apology when you're saying that you don't know for sure. And he's just like, hey, don't don't get down on Orlando. Orlando's a good guy. And he had no idea. How the hell do you know? Did you see the video? You just said you didn't. So why are you vouching again? You're you're supporting a new lie. In the video that you're doing there. Yeah. Stop lying. Hold these. If you really care about Orlando Cruz, if you really care about all of these people that I am, I'm holding accountable. I'm saying, yes, they did something wrong. Am I throwing them in jail, Duke? Am no. I putting them in the stocks? Mm -mm. Am I spanking them with a wet noodle? No, I'm giving them a tongue lashing over the radio. And I hope that it helps them feel a little bit of shame. I hope that it shows them how to truly apologize for what they've done wrong so that people will trust them again. I'm telling you, you have to be contrite when you do something like this. Mm -hmm. And these folks are not doing themselves a favor and they're not doing a favor to Marcus Mitchell either. In fact, in many of their posts, in many of their comments, they're like, but, you know, Mitchell's a good guy. Even though he just made up this heinous lie and <laughs> duped people and we helped him. Yeah. Oh, he's still a good guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, he did get shot out at Standing Rock. <clears> and of <throat> course, if he's telling this lie now, that doesn't mean he would have ever lied in the past. Yeah, of true. course not. Yeah. So, um, you know, he, they really want to retain, hold space for this liar. They, and, and, I, I get it. It's like when Roseanne lost her job. There was a lot of people out there that were like, but she's so funny. And, you know, she converted to Judaism. So who cares? When you do something that disgusting, people have a right to punish you. Yep. There can be a social consequence. Like people lose trust in you. Mm -hmm. That happens. There are consequences to your actions. Whether or not you meant to do them, whether or not you did them from a place of evil intent or whether or not you were just stupid, you're still a danger to society if you can't tell the difference between the truth and a lie, especially one this big. So uh, Marcus posted that he lied and this is his post. He too would like you to feel that he is full of warrior real strength and discipline for what he just did for, for, for the lie that he told, because guess what? Marcus is under the delusion, just like Orlando Cruz, just like Dan, the glass man and all of these people that are trying to carry water for these liars. They're under the delusion that getting caught and having to go ret row. I told a big fat lie mm -hmm. or in the case of Orlando, going, I was duped. Yep. Okay, everybody, I guess I was duped. <laughs> is equivalent to being sorry. It's not. You have to actually be sorry for the thing that you did. You have to know how it affected people, and you have to actually have some consequences for what you did. Otherwise... You end up with a person like Marcus Mitchell who says, after all of that, after everything that he did, gets caught, and you know, Orlando would like you to believe that he was the one that made Marcus tell the truth. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't have had anything to do with the radio station exposing that mm -hmm. he put up a fake x-ray. Hmm. Mm. But anyway, um, Marcus says, I lied. 
about getting shot. I didn't get shot. That's the truth. Liberation and freedom comes from within. Hmm. I have to do the right thing and own up to my lie. We already told everyone you were a liar. There was nothing left for you to do because you've already been caught. And having posted something as arrogant as pontificating about truth and liberation when you when you faked a murder really you're going to pontificate about what you know about truth Hmm. truth from you wow telling people that you got caught and you now have to come clean is not the same as being sorry which he didn't even say here he didn't apologize No, no he didn't He immediately, look at what kind of a sociopath he is. He is immediately patting himself on the back and saying, it takes real strength and discipline. Marcus Mitchell. It's posted on your Facebook page. You didn't have to sign it. Exactly. Third person. He thinks he's Gandhi and he's making a a meme quote. He should have put quotes on that. It is. It is. He's quoting himself. (laughs) I lied about getting shot. I didn't get shot. The truth, liberation, and freedom comes from within. I have to do the right thing and own up to my lie. It takes real strength and discipline to own up to the fact that you lied. Yeah. You got caught. There's a difference. Hmm. You need to understand what that difference is. If y'all don't understand what the difference is, I'll explain it to you in a minute. I'm going to explain it to you. Oh, good. So that y'all don't come out me with this nonsense about, well, he, he met the boy. He's got a good heart. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I want to hear that nonsense. I'll explain to you why it's nonsense in a minute. So first, I want to go over some of these other posts by um, other people involved in this, mm-hmm. like Mitra, who posted recently. This was sent to me by one of the fine people that listens to my show. Yep. It says... No man and trip in process of contacting donors, issuing refunds for those who gave. I was duped. I have lost respect. I am very sorry to those who thought this water protector court case was worth fighting for. I'm personally calling each donor to explain my trust was violated and return your funds. Give me at least a day to contact each of you. Hmm. Again, I had a lot of people that were like, listen, Cindy, Mitra got duped. Yeah. Mitra got taken. Mitra, Mitra also made some mistakes along the way. Yeah. Okay? Let's be honest. Mm-hmm. And she needs to be held accountable. If you love Mitra like you say you love Mitra, then hold her accountable. Say, look, Mitra, you effed up, girl. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry to tell you. I love you, though, because this is why I'm going to bring it up. I love you so much. I'm going to help you become a better person by holding you accountable to your BS. You should have. I know that you did it because you were embarrassed and you didn't want to tell everyone that you're dumb. You didn't want everyone to go, oh, my God, this person doesn't have any sense in her head. How do we trust her in the future to be spreading true information or lies? And maybe that is what you need to contend with. But you can't hold it inside. You can't keep it to yourself. Now, Mitra came on our last show, actually, mm-hmm. in the comment section, and she posted a picture of her um, 911 call. Yep. And here she uh, is commenting about that on her own uh, page, saying she, me, she means me, she should have checked the timestamps on my live stream. My first call to 911 was exactly eight minutes into the video, and my phone log reflects the same. Hmm. Um, she's saying that because I said, I couldn't understand why she was doing a live stream and not calling 911 yeah. instead of doing a live stream about the shooting. But as you have seen me do on this show, I had a lot of questions, lots of questions, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, many of them painfully obvious uh, that this was a fishy circumstance at best, at best. But I. Um, possibly a horrible uh, con job that was going to um, con people out of their money. Mm -hmm. And so um, Mitra, I am sorry uh, if, um, if you think that the fact that you did call 911 and try to get it, it, it excuses the fact that 
um, you were not able to discern that Marcus Mitchell is a pathological liar. That's right, and this stuff was fake. And that you were spreading it, and that a lot of your other friends did too. Y'all need to examine your vulnerability to lies. And you need to examine why you're so vulnerable to lies. Because if y'all can't tell the difference between hoaxes of, of this magnitude and reality, you might need to get checked out. You might need some help. So I'm going to tell you that this um, is uh, the uh, post from Joy Braun after she also was told. Nope, that's not it. Sorry. This is her post about finding out that she was promoting a scam, okay? She says a statement will come out later regarding the scammers. First of all, she's going to tell you more about that thing that she was promoting for money that she wanted you to Western Union Marcus money for oh, right. right away that she took time out of being in the hospital for a stroke to post about, to share, because she just really, really, really wanted to help Marcus out without questioning for a moment whether or not any of it was true. I'll let you know about this scammer situation later, but right now, I'd rather have love. I, ha I would rather have loved. I would rather have cared. I would rather have opened my heart to pain and to be broken than not. This isn't a marriage. This isn't <sighs> a breakup. Unless you were dating <laughs> Michael Marcus. This is uh, a crime. Marcus uh, Mark, sorry. Marcus Mitchell. Marcus Mitchell. Unless you were dating him unbeknownst to us, but I thought she was married. So my question is, why are you talking about it like it was a relationship? The man committed fraud. And you, whether or not you did it purposely, promoted that fraud. I think that if you're going to uh, denounce someone, you should start there. You should start denouncing what was wrong. In, in, in the interest of being fully transparent and honest, that's where you would start. Let me start off by saying, at least Dan the Glass Man said that. Let yeah. me start off by saying I spread a bunch of lies. Yeah. And I'm sorry to you guys for that. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he went on to, to turn that apology kind of the wrong way around in his effort to try to make himself a victim as well and protect Orlando. But he did a little bit better job than what I think this is because Joy Brun is uh, the head of the, or one of the people in the Indigenous Environmental mm -hmm. Network. So she's one of the people that were in the leadership of what was going on out at Standing Rock and that promoted people like him. In fact, she's been featured in The Guardian a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. Maybe she helped him. Yeah. Get his story in there who knows maybe maybe it was christina hollenbeck maybe it was jonathan klett mm -hmm. who knows questions i have but the thing is she's not addressing that she's not saying look i promoted a fraud of, of a magnitude that would make you wonder what kind of sociopath mike M marcus mitchell is but i'm not going to talk about that i'm going to excuse myself for having done it for having promoted it. I'm going to say that, you know what? I feel good about what I did. I would rather have uh, been kind to this uh, sociopathic liar and cared about him, even though he was faking and wasted my time and effort and money and promoted a fraud that took other people's money by the thousands of dollars. It's not just your heart and your pain, Joy Brun, of what, what this uh, promotion of this liar did to people. It took their money. It was a crime. It was fraud. Okay? We're talking about real consequences for real actions. She goes on to say, we care. That's what we do. That's what we do. That's why we do what we do. Are you saying that you care about promoting fraud? Because Marcus Mitchell was not doing something good. And by promoting someone that is promoting a fraud, you're not doing something good. Your intent 
and your heart being in the right place doesn't mean that the outcome wasn't a crime. Are y'all understanding mm -hmm. me? Is this thing on? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Am I speaking in English? Oh, yeah. How, how is this not logical? It, does this make sense to you, what I'm saying? Oh, you're making sense, of course. What, what these other people are saying doesn't make sense. You know, the, the, the sense that <clears throat> all of a sudden she's going back into talking about, not even talking about the issue. And we'll see a little bit more with other people's apologies. And they all have this mantra, too, of where they were the ones that were fooled. And yet they were participating in fooling everyone else. You know, so for her to <clears throat> backpedal and decide that, well, you know, we care. And we just act out of kindness and caring. It doesn't matter what the consequences are. It, it doesn't matter that the person was making up lies and taking up a lot of people's resources and, and uh, creating fraud and stealing people's money. We care. So we're going to care first and worry about any of this, whether this stuff is true later. I mean, that's a totally confusing way to, to be in approaching this whole issue or any issue when you're going to deal with people. You know, there, there's been a lot of pressure on us to not expose the lies. And we just can't live that way. We can't, we can't live and, and perpetuate the lies and keep on perpetuating the lies and to make excuses for the people who are doing the lying and they lie on top of that. Look at Christina Hollenbeck. Although, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. All these people who continue to perpetuate the lies of other people, they continue to be famous. They continue to climb up ladders of wealth and notoriety. Oh. Mm. Mm. Things that make you go, hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I just put that post of Joy's back up because it's just really disturbing to me that instead of acknowledging that somebody made up a murder and a shooting, none of which happened in order to scam money out of people through their sympathy, was promoted by heads of organizations and groups associated with the top leadership of Standing Rock. And their response to that coming out publicly is to go, I'm a good person. I'm still a good person. Tell the truth. Pray to Jesus. You know, mm -hmm. that's your response. He says, she goes on to say, this is a movement, a family, and the vast majority of us are good, decent. Okay. So deflect, 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 deflect. Why do you need a disclaimer to tell everyone? Not me. I'm not a scammer. You did promote a scammer. Why can't you just talk about that yeah. and acknowledge that it happened and say, hey, I'm sorry I did that. I need to vet people better. I made a mistake here. That was stupid of me. And I scam people. I should be talking about how to make reparations. If you, if you donated because of my post, tell me how much money you're out and I'll try to help you get it back. Right? Yeah. No, she's not saying that. She's saying... I'm a good person, okay? And by the way, I don't really feel all that bad for what I did because this is about my feelings and my heart and my pain. It's not about you being defrauded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she goes on to say, yes, scammers need to be called out, but so do heroes, the ones still working so hard to build a better world for us. Where, why are we talking about heroes now? Instead of, like, she wants to ch completely change the subject? You don't want to talk about the fact that this guy invented a death, a murder that he was supposedly a witness to, and that he got shot in the chest twice, and you promoted it, and that he s scammed people out of thousands of dollars? You don't want to talk about that at all? At all? Like, not, yeah, sure, we'll get to that later. First of all, I know that something about scammers came out and uh, that'll be in a separate post. Yeah. Right now, I want to talk about my pain. <clears throat> uh, also, let me tell you, yeah, we got to do that scammer call out at some point. Not here, though. Yeah. Um, but also, we should talk about the heroes. The heroes, yes. Let's talk about the heroes. Mm -hmm. Like me, for example. Mm -hmm. I've wanted I'm them. a good person. Yeah. And then she goes on to say, I'll focus on that. Oh, 
So just to be clear, she ain't going to focus on the crime committed here or the scamming or the, uh, not at all. Just, so my focus is going to be on doing that. I'll focus on that for the moment and pray for those sick or who need help. Yeah. So now, uh, Marcus Mitchell isn't a sociopathic liar. He is mentally disturbed. Is she saying that? Yeah. What's the next sentence there? Take a look at that. Nope. In, uh, so she goes on to say, oh, and yes, I am home. I am resting. One of our tires on the truck got slashed last night, so the husband is running to get a new tire. Dark side antics, I'm sure. Uh, so, you know, she's going to pray for sick people that need help, even if it's fake sick people yeah, that I guess. need help, mm -hmm. and can continue to promote those because her heart's in the right place. Uh, not going to acknowledge that I had a serious... Um, lapse in judgment mm -hmm. and that I possibly helped scam people out of thousands of dollars. Who knows how much of that came from my posting and sharing this nonsense, but I'm not taking any responsibility for it. Mm -hmm. I can assure you of that. I got to say it, it bothers me. Oh, yeah. Here's another post by her where she is talking on uh, Susie, Susie's posting of Marcus Mitchell saying, I lied. And she calls him out. She tells a story about how she was related to him. She sent me that uh, one of the, something. I don't know if one of the Orlando videos or, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Susie uh, sent me, among uh, many other people that sent me stuff for today's show. Ryan Vizens says to Susie, as an ally, I spoke to those in Lakota country. He, he's referring to Marcus Mitchell, yep. he's a Lakota man, so it's not my place to handle that situation. Don't know of anything, don't know if anything came of it though. There, he's talking about how um, a person that he, he raised a bunch of money online for Standing Rock, okay, and that some guy that was in charge of the um, GoFundMe or whatever it was, PayPal, um, took most of that money for himself, and it was supposed to have been for camp. Okay. And... Susie says, did you report that fraud? Mm -hmm. Did you report that crime? It's not. And he sa he's saying back, well, the guy's Lakota, so it's not my place. And then Joy Brun chimes in. Here she's talking about fraud. Yeah. Okay. She's addressing it in a, in a comment to the uh, Marcus thing. Not on her own page. She didn't do that, but or I didn't see her do that anyway. Um, and she says here to Ryan, Standing Rock Tribe is handling all the fraud cases. There are many fraud cases, Joy. I guess. All of them are being handled by Standing Rock. And since Standing Rock people and Standing Rock tribal members are in some of these cases, the perpetrators of said mm -hmm. fraud, how mm -hmm. are they investigating themselves? Exactly. <laughs> I wonder what the outcome of the investigation will be mm -hmm. when they investigate themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and she goes on to say, any GoFundMes over $10,000 are being looked into by their legal department, Standing Rock Legal Department or the WPLC? Who knows? Yeah. She goes on, all nonprofits who raised money using Standing Rock will be looked into as well. Wow. Ah, interesting. Such as the Indigenous Environmental Network? <laughs> I'm just asking for a friend. Mm-hmm. Um, next there's a post by Mitra. Now I wanted to show you how here Susie says that Mitra did not dress any of the wounds. They were talking about the bullet and how it supposedly ricocheted off of something. And, and then Tina Trana says, oh, she said she did. She's talking about Mitra dressing wounds. Just okay. like Orlando said he dressed wounds. Mitra apparently also told people that she, she was involved okay. with dressing of wounds. So there was two people that um, basically gave uh, validity to this completely made up story about a shooting that happened to no one. Mm -hmm. So uh, Trana says that she, uh, Mitras did say, say she had dressed wounds and that she had given them him the supplies to dress said wounds. And another woman, Diane Heideman says she said she gave him the Kinesio Kines tape, the tape that he had oh, on yeah, his, black tape, yeah. that black tape. And Mitra then chimes in to, to respond to Susie and says, since the story changed, 
to only a ricocheted round, superficial, did not puncture the lung, wound, he did not remove gauze. I mean, that, that sounds like a word salad because it <laughs> looks like a word salad. I don't know if the punctuation is just missing or um, I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to uh, translate that to mean that he changed the story of being shot twice in the chest into only a ricocheted uh, round winning going into um, but not into his chest but simply just being a superficial injury okay and that the reason he didn't remove his gauze was because there was no bullet hole to see mm-hmm. I guess yeah but listen how she's telling you that he changed his story yeah which would have been a big red flag mm-hmm yeah. At that point, you go, uh, you're a big fat liar. Yeah, especially since they posted a picture of an x-ray with a bullet in the chest. She then says, I focused on ribs and put on K-tape. You focused on the ribs, the ones that he claims were broken? Mm-hmm. And then she says, it was odd that there was no bruising. Okay, once again, she noticed no bruising, didn't call the lie out. She said, I only focused on the ribs if I were only a super if it were only a superficial injury, no need to dress. He was going to live. Yeah. But he was never going to die, and that's the point. Mm-hmm. He was never in any danger. He was never shot. It was all made up, and there was ample signs of it. Here's the next post. In this one, you've got somebody saying that uh, it was an injury, just not a gunshot. She's still, this is Trina, Tina Trana, still trying to say that, well, they figured out that it wasn't really a gunshot, but mm-hmm. they, he still have some kind of injury. And then she says, Mitra did dress the wound. It didn't look like the typical, t- a typical gunshot because he said it ricocheted. So again, all of this is them still, you know. Trying to figure out. Make, well, make excuses for something that never happened. Mm-hmm. It was all made up. Yep. Okay, next one. Then we have um, Mitra here talking about, by the way, I'm going to read that, the the end of the the comment above Mitra's um, because it's somebody that's actually making the case that, um, why did you take it away? Uh, Can you make it bigger? Uh, That it's making the case that, you know what? We shouldn't even be mad at Marcus for having made this stuff up. And um, I didn't take the whole comment, but there's a piece of it. He says, people all pitch in to get him there. This is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Mitra was used. So please don't, you know, hold her accountable because she got used. And then uh, it says, I do not see an apology from Orlando anywhere. And I cannot find that video from yesterday. Am I wrong? I know what I saw and heard. And Mitra says, I said I would only give money after the court proceedings i had it available friday but thinking he would run she's talking about marcus Mm -hmm. so she also thought marcus wasn't going if she gave him the money he would he would take the money and run Mm -hmm. and she was still willing to help him and lie for him exactly and then she said only after which only after so she wouldn't give him the money because she was afraid he would run and she, was, she said she would only give him money after he went to court and that Marcus got mad at her. He wanted the money now and she wouldn't bend. Okay. Why is she only telling us this after the fact? Mm-hmm. This is all stuff she should have said a long time ago. And then Luba Williams said, I hope someone recorded that video. I know I took screenshots. In fact, let me go find one of them. Next one. Luba, again, here is talking. Oh, let me read the top of that one. I think this is the one that was defending Marcus. It says, uh, that injury is still helping and being part of so much. He lied about being shot, but he did take take bullets for us. (laughs) So he lied about being shot in Albuquerque, but he didn't lie about being shot in in Standing Rock. And then it says, and he did need help. Many people of this movement have scared have scammed and continue to do so but only few stood and suffered for our cause lest he fest least he fessed up he didn't have any other choice though and then it says that's more than anyone else has done 
No, that's the bare minimum. Yeah. And you shouldn't be celebrating it. And you shouldn't be defending this nonsense. And he says, he still deserves our love and our prayers. And all our people and lands deserve justice. No one should be left behind. Prayers you see set free, bro. Prayers you set free, bro. He's not in jail. Yeah. Hate me too if you want. F all the money. Warriors bound by blood. <laughs> yeah. Could you read the next one here yeah, by Luba? Luba says, he didn't fess up. He got caught. And Luba That's went right. on to say, was it a lie when he said Theron Begay and his friends jumped him and beat him up and killed his kitten? Was that a lie too? See, there's a lot of people questioning, has he ever told the truth? Yeah. Because that's exactly how you should feel when someone makes up a lie of this magnitude. Exactly. Not just makes up a lie, of this magnitude. Okay, so let's get to some analysis. All right. Um, this is an Obit article, which is, uh, can you take your cursor off? Oh, I don't know why it won't let me click on it for some reason and I think it's because your cursor is on it my cursor is not on anything on this document nope. I can see that it is I'm up here okay well it's really weird mine I guess my screen is frozen for some reason um I'm sorry for the technical difficulties I am experiencing on my computer it's right here you can read it from here you have the whole thing fantastical okay it is finally opening it took like half an hour it says uh it is from splain you a thing which is on uh obit ob orbit or o obit man i apologize that it is uh so difficult to get this to work i don't know why my computer is doing this to me i think it hates me um, but it starts off by, can you start off by reading that? Sure. Maybe we can fix this real quick. Feeling bad is not the same, not the same thing as being sorry. This, uh, discussion of racism, Brock Turner, abuse and assault. There is this concept that I was taught growing up Catholic. It's basically this, in order to actually earn God's forgiveness during the sacrament of confession, it wasn't enough to simply perform a recitation of your sins. You had to truly be sorry which meant not only getting, having done or feeling bad, uh, but acknowledging and accepting that what you had done was wrong, as well as determination to what you do and what you could not repeat um, the sin. Without these elements, one could not actually uh, receive absolution, supernatural forgiveness. I disagree with a lot of Catholic doctrine and policies, not to mention the acts of the church itself, but there's a lesson in this concept, which should, which when removed from religious entanglements, has a lot of relevance to our modern society. It's one, ironically enough, that many Catholics themselves forget as well. Too often in society, we act though people are entitled to forgiveness, especially if they s say that they're sorry or demonstrate some sort of bad feeling about what they've done. Too often, mental and emotional labor of a given conflict is forced on the injured party. Despite the Despite having the one initially harmed by the interaction in, in the interaction of the event, the onus is still on the victim to solve the conflict through a demonstration of forgiveness, often while the initial harm remains unacknowledged or outright ignored in favor of prioritizing the transgressor's bad feeling. See, yeah. that's very important. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're giving deference to the transgressor's bad feeling and in order to do that, they have to make themselves the victim, yeah. which is completely backwards. So it says, go on, beyond that. Beyond that, there is a sentiment that even acknowledging that hurt was done or in any way bringing up the result of the transgression is treated as unfair, as an unfair attack on the inciting person. Exactly. That's exactly, do you see how these people are, are doing that? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what they're doing. College humor made, college humor made a humorous sketch video showing what is meant to be a hyperbolic example of this situation where a white man makes a racist joke by accident to a woman of color during what appears to be a work party. And we don't have that. Video. I, I, I showed you that video, yeah, the college humor video. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I, I'm better off not showing it because you know how they like to take uh, content down for, oh, yeah, yeah. but I will tell you that it's hilarious because it has 
these people are playing some kind of question answer game um uh like you know if you were an animal what kind of an animal would you be and things Mm -hmm. like that and um uh the white guy in the video uh is questioned by a woman that is from india and she says if i was an if i wasn't employed here with you if i didn't work with you guys what kind of job would i had and he says that she would work at a 7-eleven yeah and so then everyone was like recoils in horror and goes, <gasps> and immediately they focus on the guy that said the bad thing. Everyone mm-hmm. does. Oh yeah. And it's, goes, oh, oh yeah, you other... poor thing. You must feel so terrible for what ha- what you just said to this woman. Mm-hmm. And the victim, the real victim of all of this. Going, What's going on? What's up? How come you're doing this? You know, the other right. party attendees interact in reaction, folks, is all their attention on the white man. And how horrible he must feel over having made that mistake and going out of their way to comfort him for that horrible feeling. Meanwhile, the woman of color, Rika, is completely ignored. Her feelings are dismissed. Her hurt is unacknowledged except as a plot in explaining the emotional trauma suffered by the white man for having made such a comment. She is offered no comfort whatsoever, not even the recognition that the comment itself was messed up. When she tries to bring up... What just happened, at least one. At least to receive some acknowledgement of the harm that was just done and the fact that it was done to her, the perception is that she is unjustifiably attacking the man who made the racist comment. The simple acknowledgement of harm done is perceived as an act of harm itself. Yeah. The fuss is made before even an apology is issued. Do you see the similarity to these people mm-hmm. and what they're doing? Oh, definitely, definitely. Before they even apologize for what they really did that was wrong, for their involvement in it, and they're already like being protective, gi- giving themselves pats on the shoulders and protecting each other and saying, mm-hmm. oh, don't, don't, don't gel at them. Their heart was in the right place. That's they didn't right. have anything. He didn't have anything to do with this. They're not responsible for the fraud. Nothing, nothing doing. Move on. Nothing to see here. That's right. Until they do it again, Mm -hmm. and again, and again, and again, and again. (laughs) He says, um, going on in this article, the fuss is made even before an apology is issued, and when an insincere apology is finally offered, complete with eye roll, (laughs) the act of just voicing acknowledgement of what occurred is treated as a complete act of of contrition that is exactly the same pass you are giving to marcus mitchell that is exactly the same pass that you are giving to orlando and to all of these people that promoted it the very fact that they're even saying i got duped Mm -hmm. or you know that is a complete act of change and contrition and when it is not it's not the same thing while the video here uh, being used is obviously a joke or a parody, the actual circumstances that are depicted in the video are very common on both macro and micro scales. I just showed you a bunch of examples of it tonight. Oh, yeah, for sure. Situations where someone's trust was violated, for example, mm-hmm. where the violation of trust caused a disconnect from necessary support systems and where revealing the identity of the boundary violator or violators might be a step toward helping the people rebuild necessary trust. Um, The identity of the transgressor is instead protected because they feel bad. Mm -hmm. Or where the person is still welcomed into the community, still told that they are welcome and that they are loved and that they are needed in the community because they felt bad about what they did. With no consideration of how that inclusion, that continued inclusion makes the victims, the victims of all of these people sharing it and the lie itself, the victims of that fraud are the ones that are made to feel excised, exiled. So there is no consideration to how their inclusion makes the victim feel or even where any expressed discomfort is punished as being unfair. Hmm. Um, Similarly, when someone is physically hurt by someone else's actions, 
making any mention of being in pain or referencing some related difficulty or need is treated as an attack. The implication being that because the other person feels bad or apologized or attempted a half a half-assed apology, making them aware of the realities of the situation that they've caused or having to face consequences of your actions is somehow treated as if it's unfair. It's crazy. That's yeah. exactly what these people are doing. Yep. That's not fair. They're a good person. <laughs> I don't mean the abuse, the abuse technique that sometimes people face when someone is intentionally trying to make another person feel bad by bringing up a past issue or through performative exaggeration of their injury. But times when, for example, someone's actions resulted in, say, increased back pain and being accused of unfairly push, punishing someone for daring to make a noise of pain when they have to bend over to pick something up or worse, still ask for help in picking it up. On a macro scale, we see this trend in, is in publicized cases of sexual assault, where the act of seeking a legal conviction for a rapist is seen as somehow victimizing that rapist, where the expectation that someone who has committed a crime such as rape be held responsible for breaking the law by subjecting them to the actual legally defined punishment for committing that act. And that is somehow seen as vindictive or unfair to the person that committed the crime. Where the person who committed the crime is treated as its victim, while the actual victims themselves are made out to be attackers, aggressors, and unreasonable. It's important to note that very often this behavior is most often present in cases where the person who did the thing that needs apologizing for is privileged in some way over the person that they took advantage of. In the video, the offending person is not only white, while the person receiving the insult is a person of color, but he's also a male and the woman he's insulting is female. Mm -hmm. um, say you're sorry. Part of the reason why stuff like this happens is through a misunderstanding that feeling bad is the same thing as being sorry. Similarly, that apologizing is the same thing as actually feeling remorse for what you did. In order to actually feel remorse and be sorry for what you did, you have to feel bad for what you've done. Yeah, that's part of it. But you also have to understand why what you did was wrong or bad or problematic. You have to feel bad for the right reasons. Okay, so you can't just say, I feel bad because I was duped. I feel bad because I was used. You also have to know that you should feel bad about the fact that you spread lies and that you were complicit in the, in the con. You have to feel bad about that. There are many reasons why someone might feel bad after the fact that has nothing to do with regret, regretting their actions or having remorse for their behavior, for their bad behavior. For example, they may feel bad because they're actually being made to face some of the social consequences of their behavior. Or maybe they're feeling bad because they know that the social expectation is for them to act like they feel bad, right? That's what people expect. Otherwise, they would think you were a sociopath, so mm. they fake it. Someone who actually feels bad about what they did or someone who, actu who feels bad about what they did, excuse me, because they fear punishment for their actions, which they haven't yet received, but they fear that punishment, isn't upset because they actually caused someone harm, but instead because they were caught. That's what I think is going on in the case of Marcus Mitchell oh, and of Orlando and of some of these other people. Definitely. A person like that has little motivation 
not to repeat their act, mm-hmm. their crime. Yeah. If they can make sure that no one finds out about it or that the consequences can be avoided, they'll probably do it again and again. Hmm. And the next time, it'll be bigger. This conflation of being of, ba- of bad feelings and assuming that that means that the person knows what was wrong and what why doing it was wrong and that they feel remorse starts all the way in our childhood when teachers or babysitters uh, force a child to apologize to someone else for some action saying something like don't you feel bad without explaining or giving more clarification over why they should feel bad and when we don't make an effort to explain to children and adults why something that they've done is wrong about why their actions should carry remorse then we are teaching those people to fear getting caught. And we're teaching them that that fear of getting caught is the same thing as being aware that you're wrong, having remorse for your actions. That's what you're teaching these people when you don't truly hold them accountable. That not wanting to face punishment is the same thing as believing that something they did was wrong. That not wanting to face social consequences of believing in and supporting something harmful is the same thing as not ever having believed in the harmful thing in the first place, not ever having supported it. That's what you're teaching. That's what you're saying in your posts about this, folks. And it's not just the outside observer or the victim who gets fooled because of this. It's the individual like Marcus himself. It's the individuals like Mitra, like Joy, all these people that are making excuses either for themselves, their participation in sharing these lies or for the people that created the lies. Those doing the hurtful act may honestly believe that they really are sorry because they're scared of the social consequences of doing the wrong thing. They may be deluding themselves, in other words. They may honestly believe that because social consequences keep them from doing certain things or making certain comments or or, or telling a certain joke or, or pulling off a certain hoax, that that's the same thing as thinking that what they did was bad. Hmm. Since the fear of social punishment is seen as the same thing as remorse, when someone is made to face the reality of their lie, of their actions, of what they did, and then they legitimately feel bad about that, it's seen as an attack because they already felt fear, so they they felt bad, right? And so they think that Actually having to face consequences and actually feeling remorse is your is an attack. You're hurting them. Yeah. You got to hurt their feelings too. Hmm. Because their actions aren't guided and were never guided out of a genuine sense of remorse, but instead out of fear. The actions that followed their expression of remorse do not support expressions of real remorse. I just showed you how what they said in their videos, in their comments, shows they're not really sorry for what their participation was. Mm -hmm. The apology seems insincere because it is insincere. It's not based on genuine regret for pain caused, but rather on regret for unpleasantness they received, for unpleasantness they feel Mm -hmm. or were made to feel. Eventually, With those people, a pattern forms whereby the apology appears performative rather than genuine. And the person is written off as whatever, a bigot, a liar, unwilling to face their own privilege, whatever. The truth is when you can, like, you know, they say, oh, what a tangled web we weave when we first uh, decide to deceive. Yes, but also the more you do it, the more difficult it is to tell the truth at any time. 
Trump do- doesn't just lie, uh, you know, like a, a, a sociopathic, you know, liar. He can't tell the truth. Mm-hmm. Once you lie that that much, you can't tell the truth anymore. And all of his followers have coddled those lies, supported those lies, turned a blind eye to those lies to the degree they can't tell the difference between the truth and a lie anymore. It's a slippery slope, folks. You don't want to go into that darkness. But these folks would want you to to believe that it's okay. Okay? So from the perspective of the person that is written off in a situation like this, after people just decide they can't be trusted, it appears to them that they were unfairly ostracized. You hear Orlando saying, hey, if you, you want to unfriend me, go ahead. Be yeah. that way. They feel that they're being punished for having made a simple mistake. Everyone makes mistakes, right? Mm-hmm. In reality, it wasn't one mistake. It was a pattern of mistakes and lies. It was a pattern of things that we saw from you and that you showed you were unwilling to learn from them or acknowledge them even to have a more deep understanding instead of a superficial understanding and uh you know that you were showing that you just had a superficial understanding enough to avoid making any specific uh, enough to not to avoid making that specific mistake again but not well enough to understand the underlying issue what was so wrong about your lies and what you did and how they hurt people and why making up a, a murder and a shooting is disgusting you're not really addressing the actual root of the problem that's what we can tell from your half-assed lie from your half-assed apology it is the difference between understanding the rules and understanding the game or rather it's the difference between how can i avoid getting in trouble And how can I avoid hurting people again? I think that the folks I showed you in tonight's videos and tonight's show want to avoid getting in trouble. But they don't really care about how they ended up hurting people, that they hurt people. And because of that, they will likely do it again. Now, going back to this article, this is not to say that someone with genuine remorse won't be afraid of social consequences of their actions because that is an element of human instinct that is you know, natural selfish components of every individual's way of thinking. It has to do with, you know, fight for survival, really. But the mark of someone who really is legitimately trying to be good and is trying to prioritize the needs of other individuals in the understanding that as a social animal species that we are, we must survive on our own, but we thrive together. And so we have to work toward reducing overall harm to everyone so what does this all mean well when you're legitimately sorry you want to do what you can to make sure that you won't hurt the other person again that this will not happen anymore okay let's use the example of the video which we just talked about Mm -hmm. uh in which uh there was uh well we didn't see the video but the one that we just talked about in this article where uh the the white man makes a racist joke okay Mm -hmm. Let's use the example of the video for simplicity. We'll call it making a racist comment by accident, okay? If you legitimately feel bad for what you've done, you prioritize con- your prioritized concern should be the individual you harmed directly. That means, first of all, addressing that you understand that what just happened is wrong and that you don't take that lightly. This is where intent versus impact comes into play. Did the guy, right before giving his answer, think to himself, hmm, I'm going to make a racist remark right now? No. Nor did he think, what's the best way to cause Reiki pain right now? Yeah. No. Okay, realistically, we don't know for sure what his intent was. That's why, that's, folks, that's why I don't ever talk about intent. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, th- I look at outcomes, but this guy uh, continues talking about intent here, and he says that, uh, for the benefit, of, you know, he's going to give the benefit of the doubt that this guy wasn't legitimately, you know, it just really did slip out that he did say this thing and he didn't mean to say it. In the case of Marcus, we know he meant to tell a lie. Yeah. Exactly. He made up a whopper. Yeah. And we know that Orlando intended to lie as well. So uh, maybe we can give a benefit of the doubt to some of these other people that uh, like 
John and Mitra and, and, and Joy, who knows if they intended to lie with him. Regardless of whether that was the intent or not, though, the result was that a comment was made which had heavy racist implications given the person to whom they were said and the person was hurt. It doesn't matter that he didn't mean to hurt her, that he doesn't actually believe what he said. He still said it. And in this case, it doesn't really matter whether or not Mark, uh, Marcus's friends that shared his lie intended to lie with him, intended to hurt people and defraud people. That's what actually happened. The remorse one feels for having done something is nothing in comparison to the pain of having it done to you, having been the person defrauded, lied to. Do you get that? Mm -hmm. His failure to stop the other people from defending him and fawning all over him only makes it clear that he doesn't understand that fact or care about it, that neither did any of those who witnessed that interaction. To them, the, guy, the white guy's pain was more important, more valid, more real than the actual victims. And in this case, that's exactly what's happening. That's why I'm calling it out. You guys are having more compassion for Orlando, for all of these other people that were carrying water for this liar, uh, Marcus Mitchell, than you are for the victims of the fraud. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so wrong. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to read the rest of this for you, but I did want to just share with you how that works um, and to get to the conclusion of what this means. Uh, because it goes through and says what he should have done. He should have uh, not let the, the silence drag on and addressed what was wrong. Same thing that Orlando and Mitra and all these other people shouldn't have let it drag on. You should have come right out right away the minute you saw something wrong. I shouldn't have let you shouldn't be letting people defend what you did wrong and saying you're still a good person. Own your nonsense. Own your part. Three, if you still don't understand all of that, you could still work to apologize to the real victims of this con. The people that had their uh, concern raised for this a man that lied to them and also those who gave money, time, effort, etc. Those are the real victims. Um, you need to understand the problem. You need to take a t time to understand the problem, which is that uh, it's it goes beyond that the fact that Marcus Mitchell told this whopper of a lie and committed fraud. Um, you need to also internalize that uh, when something like that can be done so easily by someone like this in this very relaxed state, as he did it, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean you're a pathological liar, but what it does mean is that you have internalized the ability to lie like it's nothing. Yeah. It's so simple to you, and that should scare the hell out of everyone. Okay. So, um, ultimately, what it comes down to is how much does not doing a bad thing matter to you? How much do you care about harm being done to others? It's asking yourself, what can I do to prevent this happening again? Rather than just asking if you can do something to help. Mm -hmm. Okay, because having your heart in the right place, having the good intent that just wanted to help the right, a person that was in need, not enough. Not enough in, in order for you to be able to make good decisions and be a trustworthy person. And it's not enough to just feel bad. You have to want to change and make an honest effort to do that change and to be willing to start working on it right away. You have to be willing to make it about someone other than yourself. It's not enough to just want to be different than people that are wrong, racist, sexist, homophobic. But who, but to, 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 um, Toe the line of, of social convention, you have to actively be different if you don't want to just be the status quo. Otherwise, the results are going to be the same. And the person on the receiving end has no way of telling the difference until it's already too late.
Now, if that isn't enough of a cautionary tale, I want to share with you why this is so important. Because people are, you know, people are talking about what this election means. People are talking about what's going to happen if people believe in Trump's lies about the caravan and, and Trump's fear mongering about uh, terrorists coming over the southern border and all of this other crazy nonsense that he is se- tell- selling to people. What if people are too stupid and they vote against the self-interest of the best for this country again mm-hmm. and we have a uh, con- Republican controlled House and Senate and more of this horribleness keeps coming out. People are genuinely terrified right now yeah. for the safety of their own lives. If you don't confront lies and liars, that's where it goes. That's why you can't have a, a, a an honest conversation about how these terrorist attacks were based on incite, you know, the president inciting hatred and anti-Semitism. That's why the news announcers say, well, it wasn't his fault exactly. Yes, yes, it was. The more you're able to tell the truth to yourself and to the public, the better you are at stopping the horrible things from happening. But that starts by being honest. Let me share with you a Facebook post of, you know, why we can't just coddle people for doing the, the, the base, the bare minimum. Why we shouldn't just coddle people uh, like the um, openly gay a woman that said the mega bomber was a good guy. Okay. Yeah. Here's another story of a woman that clearly, clearly is not remorseful for what she did, but wants you to give her a pass anyway. This is an Iowa teacher who wore blackface to a Halloween party. Okay. She's now under investigation for doing this, but she, um, she actually wants you to feel sorry for, for her because again she immediately has made herself into the victim and I'm not kidding you when I tell you that she is blaming her decision to wear blackface on ignorance her own ignorance of the history of blackface being wrong even though Megan Kelly just lost her yeah her, jo- her, her job I say that's... on daytime television mm-hmm. she's this Iowa teacher has been living under a rock she wants you to believe she's been living under a rock. She's just, she was duped. Yeah. She didn't know, right? Um, so she was ignorant of the history of blackface. And also she wants to blame the media while also throwing her albino child under a bus and using him as an excuse for why she is a racist. <laughs> In a recently re- uh, released statement by her attorney, she actually uh, makes this case. Um, I'm going to read to you uh, excerpts from what her lawyer's letter said to the public. Megan says in this, uh, the, lo- the lawyer says, Megan has been a dedicated employee within this district for 10 years, of which the majority of her employment at a racially diverse elementary school. Throughout this time, Megan has maintained an impeccable employment record. And in this article that was in The Root, they translated each of these paragraphs into layman's terms, <laughs> into honesty. Um, and it says, some of her best students are black. Plus, shouldn't she be commended for never having been disciplined for this kind of thing after a decade of working at a diverse school? Sure, the entire school is racist, so she probably fits right in. But why are you bringing up this old stuff? Yeah. <laughs> um, do you really think, just from what you've heard, a little you've heard of her, this lawyer's letter, that she knows what she did was wrong, that she understands that she should feel remorse, that she did feel remorse for it, that she won't do it again? No, no. She had nothing but excuses. Nothing but excuses and uh, ignorance. So I, I'm not to blame for this. I thought it was really weird responses that uh, she wouldn't just be, oh my God, that's a horrible thing that I did. It was really wrong. No, I never knew the history of blackface. Therefore, how can I be sorry for something I didn't even know of the history of? Even though I'm a teacher and teaching your children and I don't watch any local news about the current issues with this, I am just ignorant and it's, it's not my fault. Then she attacks the media because this was printed in the Quad City Times. 
And by the way, I have gotten the same kind of backlash and attacks from all of these phonies that I expose and their friends and their sympathizers because, of course, it's my fault for telling people what they did. Because if nobody would have found out what they did and that they were frauds, they wouldn't have gotten in trouble and they could still mm -hmm. hold their heads up high. So it's actually my fault. That's how Trump is saying the, fo the, the, the fake news media is to blame for everything he did for inciting the violent terrorist attacks he incited, okay? So anyway, he says, uh, in the, the lawyer says in the letter on Thursday, the Quad City Times published a picture of Megan at the aforementioned party. It's clear from their article and accompanying picture that the Quad City Times either acted to promote an already divisive country, which it did, or meant said publication to cause death threats to Megan <laughs> and her family, which it has. So... The Quad City Times is responsible for making her look like a racist and causing diverse, d d a divisive, further divisiveness in the country and putting her at risk of being killed hmm. for what she did. She's so the victim. She's now the victim. Yeah. Do you see how this nonsense of defending these people and coddling them as this attorney is doing as the people that you saw on, on the comments of this show have mm -hmm. been doing is awful and just breeds more evil and terribleness. Yep. If you don't, you should pay attention to it. Go check out this uh, story. I'm going to throw these two um, articles into the comments of the show and you can go find these for yourself. Um, in the meantime, let me show you one final thing. This is a post that was posted by Jay-Z Ellis on Facebook. Okay. And it comes with a picture. I'm going to read this to you because um, the bare minimum can be horrible and evil people. Yes, even the people that pay their taxes, even the people that kiss their children goodnight, even the people that go to church on Sunday can lend themselves to horrible crimes. And still feel like they're good people. And that slippery slope can lead us right to genocide. And we've been talking about all of this in the context of the coming elections tomorrow. How people can and cannot discern what is alternative facts mm -hmm. and what is an outright lie anymore in this country. And why we need to do more to hold each other accountable. Because that slippery slope can result in more than just a con of the size of the Marcus Mitchell thing, it can result in death and genocide. Here's a picture that goes along with this post. And he wrote, and it says they're officers and have, I can't tell what, these are officers and Heffernan at Salouet. Salouet is, uh, I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of these German words. Yeah. But these are um, a bunch of uh, Nazi officers, basically, yep. of the Third Reich. And as you, you can see, well, people can't all, all of them see this because they're listening on the radio, but mm -hmm. this is a picture of Nazi officers at a camp that was near Auschwitz where they went to relax on their days off. And one of them has got an accordion. They're all they're some of them are running across a bridge toward the camera. They're all laughing, and some of them are look like they're screaming and mm -hmm. squealing. Having a good time. And they're having a good old time. They think this is hilarious. It says, This picture always struck me because unlike so many photos of that time, it's so relaxed and unposed. Just a bunch of coworkers having a good time. But this is a resort called Salouette. It was built for these people and it was 18 miles away from where they work a place called Auschwitz it was built to give them a break from their very important work these smiling happy people were on their day off from putting Jews in ovens a lot of times people will say they look at the faces in photos like these and they try to understand but I don't need to try I understand these people thoroughly those two on the left in the front, they were besties, party girls, just waiting for the war to be over so they could get down to the business of finding husbands and enjoying their 20s. Hmm. Blonde boy behind them, 
a bit awkward, but always up for a laugh. The guy with the accordion learned it from his grandpa, but never had any intentions of playing it professionally. It was just good for parties, though. They had their fun out there in the woods. It's good times. It's good sometimes to get away and just leave your worries behind, isn't it? And then they got back in their cars and they rode back to the camp and they got on with the business of genocide. The party girls, they were in charge of no noting down every possession that they took from those incoming into the, into the ovens. Blondie over there, he took the children, he told the children sternly, but not unkindly, how important hygiene was as he led them to the gas showers. Herr Accordion over there, a laboratory assistant to Dr. Mengele, absolutely marvelous at keeping the equipment clean and organized. That was his real skill. Not just laying down a rousing chorus of horsed wessel when the beer was flowing, and he was much valued for it. And the fact that he always remembered your birthday and asked about your family, oh, just put him over the top as a good guy. That's important when you're stationed far away from home, isn't it? To have someone who reminds you of normal life, just waiting at the other end of the allied surrender. Of course, that's exactly who they were. And absolutely none of it negates the fact that the nice people in this photo were effing monsters, many of whom ended the war at the end of a rope or in front of a firing squad. And you know what? I bet they did it crying, begging, sniveling, screaming that it wasn't fair, that they were just doing their jobs, that they were good people. They were just doing a job. They had a job to do. That's all. They were given a job. They were expected to do it. And what would you have done in their place? That right there is the most important question that you have to ask yourself. It's one that I've pondered my entire life. And you know what? I know the answer. I would never allow myself to be put into a position of finding out what I would do if I was asked to put people in an oven. I would rather run or die than put myself in a position like that. And it's why I would never have been a cop or a soldier. The lesson I learned from these people was to never put myself in a position where I was required to do evil in the name of following orders. And I have very little sympathy for those who choose otherwise. There are not good people on both sides. There are party girls and weekend polka players everywhere, people who are kind to their children and bake extra cookies for their neighbors, but some people choose to be instruments of horror and death and lies, and others do not. And history is rightfully merciless to the former. So folks, I know I took you down a very, very dark, dark path here, but I do believe that lies fester, they grow, they become more and more evil, and they lead us to things like Trump and to the things that, that have been coddled in the examples I've shown you on tonight's show. That's why we have to fight against lies. We have to fight against the author of lies and the people that coddle those lies and the people that just close their ears and pretend they're not listening anymore. We have to fight against all of that. If we really want to see change in our country, yes, go vote tomorrow. Make sure that you take someone with you. Do everything you can to change the leadership of this country to make it more reflective of what it should be. But don't just do that because that's not enough. If we continue down the path we're headed where we're not confronting the truth, the reality of the things that are happening right in front of our eyes, it will continue to get worse. Thanks for being on a Mexican Crossing Lines with Cindy gomez Shemp And Duke gomez Shemp. You've been listening to 88.1 FM, KPPPLP Fargo-Moorhead, where we are adding local color to your airwaves. Buenas noches. Go vote.